Uh, tēnā tato katoa. Thank you, everybody, for coming along um, this afternoon. Um, I just want to acknowledge all our staff in the room and Councillor McKilmoff and um, Golden Bay Board Member Knowles. You're welcome to join the table now because we've got a special seat for you. We are just trialling a new uh, layout here, so hopefully the sound is a bit better to, uh, public, uh, to everyone in the forum. Uh, we will start with karakia and then get into our living. Kia tau mai te maramatanga, kia tau mai te rangimarie, kia tau mai te kaha me te whai whakaaro mo tēnei kaupapa. Huie tā kie. Okay, so uh, we'll just quickly go through uh, any apologies, um, any declarations of interest. Yes, for the discretionary funds application, we have a strong opinion. Um, Deputy Chair Hart for the discretionary fund of the Mortuiga Historical Wharf. Um, and minutes from the 20 February meeting. Can I have a, a mover and a seconder for them? Okay, moved by Deputy Chair Hart. Uh, seconded by Member Armstrong, all four. Right. Any again? Carried. I'd like to invite um, Peter Renshaw up to just introduce yourself to everybody. Hello. Yeah, Peter Renshaw, um, the Council of Bay Club Master. Yeah, call myself a little bit. Went to Michael Way High School. So, really pleased to be um, in the role that I'm in now. A really strong uh, background in uh, CCB um, in the maritime sector and in education as well. Uh, I just basically want to be here today to just say who I am, really, um, where you can find me um, should you want to talk. That goes to the as well. Um, yeah. Really What's the role here. of the Harbour Master? Yeah, that's a common um, common question, um, and I was actually looking um, at how other councils have. Um, got that message out of what my, my role actually is. Um, so my role is essentially navigation safety. Um, so I'm looking at all of the, the Tasman Bay and essentially looking at it as in terms of risk to an individual, um, whether that's commercial, recreational, the council or commercial operators, and um, how can we mitigate the risk for our region, um, whether that's putting you know, enforcing more of the five knot rule, which is the national rule, um, or whether that's being adding extra safety measures um, like nationally, Life jackets aren't required to be worn, but they are required to be on a vessel. Um, so is that as a region, should we be saying the same as likes of uh, Canterbury, Nelson, Wellington, Tauranga, Bay of Plenty, Auckland, where they're saying everyone must wear them. You know, so that's my job is to look at all of those sort of things. Um, I'm not there as a rescue service. However, we do a lot of hours on the water. So we do an average of over 600 hours patrolling in our region. Um, so we do help a lot of people out. Um, and we're not about to change that. Um, in terms of calling me in an emergency, you're probably better off calling Coast Guard or if it's really serious, call 111 on the police. Um, and the police can contact me directly and task me to the job as well. Um, also not into fisheries. So I've had a lot of people um, over the summer where I've come up to them and asked them a few questions. Um, we've signed up to a project with MNZ, uh, No Excuses Days. So where we go out and ask questions, whether you've got life tickets on the boat, communication. Um, and a lot of people straight away think, assume we're here to check their fishing catch. Okay. Nothing to do with us. Okay. Um, that's all MPI. Um, I'm not. I'm not there to look at your fishing catch at all. I'm purely there looking at navigation safety. So yeah, one thing I will look at is how to actually get that message into the public eye and what what I'm here for and how I can support um, the community. Do you have? Um, do you do like a children's program so yeah. that you catch them early? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so we spend, I think last year, we spent two weeks at the rec centre doing the Kids Can um, program. Um, and we had the hard massive vessel there. Um, we had a life raft. Um, like I say, my background is, is in education. I spent nine years as first officer on the Spirit of New Zealand. And I've spent a year and a half uh, working at NMIT as a nautical tutor. Um, so I'm really keen to, to push that area as well. Um, I haven't heard the dates for this year's Kids Can program, um, but we certainly plan to be there again. Yeah. So. 
just one thing I heard through the grapevine, congratulations on your effort in the emergency the other day when someone managed to remove three fingers from their hand and you went out and helped and got them back. And I understand the fingers were successfully reattached, so well done. Yep. Wow. So we do do things like that as well. <laughs> Not our main role, but... Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so we'll, we'll move on to um, public forum. I'll get my timer on. So we've got... Uh, we did have five speakers, but one was Amanda from EPODS who we will be meeting with on Friday, whoever can make that meeting. Um, so first up, we have uh, Mr. Hellier. Madam Chairman, members of the board and councillors, we wish to thank the mem members of the board for your efforts in getting an apology for an offensive remark made by Adrian Humphreys, that Mr. Stevens and I, Mr. Stevens there and I, were developing an ongoing fantasy. We believe this apology is insincere as it does not truly reflect the extent and validity of the other statements made by other members of the council staff that were related to the issue. Hence, our further letter to the board dated the 11th of March, 2024. Here are some examples. I'm quoting from a letter sent to Mr. Van Stratum of Linz, dated the 20th of January, 2021. As discussed, there are several individuals who are act acting voraciously against the TDC, and this has been one of their most recent tactics. I include the text below from a briefing note prepared by one of our River Engineers Blank, who is aware of the incident that is being misrepresented. The vehicle had been through several flood events and considering the current state of the vehicle and as well as the landowner wanting the vehicle buried as part of the cleanup of their land, the other vehicle referred to in the allegation come from somewhere upstream and was pulverized wreck after traveling some distance downstream in the Gita flood event and ended up in the blank property. This vehicle was found on the blank property in an old original channel and was barely visible on the surface. The vehicle was recovered out of the old channel, pulled back as far as practical and overlaid with granite sand and was being that was being excavated from the channel being constructed. Um, the second, there was use of a six of section 330 of the RMA to justify burying the cars and so avoiding having to refer to the Litter Act. Section 330 allows for certain action to be taken during an adverse event. The word during, I stress, during an adverse event that is likely to cause loss of life, injury, or serious damage to property. Section 330 didn't apply as the adverse event occurred several weeks prior. There was action taken against a board member, Mr. Hughes, for demanding honest answers to questions about the issues. I won't say more as there are others more qualified to speak on this. And I have another letter here sent to Mr. Stevens, who asked various questions of the Chief Operating Officer over the Litter Act. And she has responded on the 25th of February, 2022, and she said the cars were buried on private land with the consent of the landowners. That is patently not true. The landowners have told us several times that they did not give consent. In her letter of apology, 
Ms. Ray remains silent on our request for a written guarantee that all references to Mr. Humphrey's offensive statements are removed from all Council's files, including information stored under the Council's evidential gathering policy and in data recorded in accordance with the Council's compliance strategies. Could the Board ask to have this rectified? On a letter to the Board, our letter to the Board asks for an investigation into actions and statements the Council staff on the Peach Island issue and where, and where appropriate apologies to be tendered and retractions made. The one star in all this has been Councillor Walker. She was able to arrange for some lawyers, arrange a meeting on the property and in this room, which enabled a resolution of the difficulties being faced by the landowners. We suspect this wouldn't have made her popular with some of the council staff. But it definitely sets an example for some of the fence cutting colleagues to inspire. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, committee board members and councillors, uh, the opportunity to present to you is appreciated, and I have a conflict of interest to declare. That is, I've jumped out of a perfectly great aeroplane and lived to tell the tale. So the background to that is the skydiving operation is under attack by certain people in the community who are making it their business to see that that operation is potentially shut down. Um, that includes a certain business at the end of the runway that has uh, yet to present its case to the environmental court. Um, but my, my interest is the fact that having jumped out of an airplane and having lived as a ratepayer in Motueka for a period of nearly 22 years, I can certainly attest to the fact that if it had been a problem, I would have felt aggrieved a long time ago. For the record, I live within 500 metres of the aerodrome as a circular, um, in a circle. And there are only two occasions under which the operator has not maybe complied with what the operational standards are. One was in 2009, there was a low fly past as he took off, because there was a car on the runway and he had to get out to Nelson to do a 100 hour inspection on the aircraft. Um, I, do, I do fly as well, by the way. And the second one was not too long ago, an air quality issue, which I brought to the attention of Stuart Bill. Is it Stuart Bill? Stuart, the operator, who is now living here. He works for InFlight, having sold it to them. And Stuart dealt with that within 24 hours. The problem was that the Bowser sits at the hangar, and if you've got a, like today, in a bit of a northwest and northeasterly, that the aircraft gets refueled while the prop's going round. They can't shut it down. And then we got we got an air quality issue at the house. So I came round to the place and said, it's not, not acceptable. Can I see operating certificate? And they called Stuart. He came to me on the next day, sorted. The bars had moved to the middle of the airfield. But we're talking about a, 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 a an issue of noise. So the particular parties in town are saying that it, the people are getting sick because there's aircraft noise. Um, if that's the case, then maybe we should shut down the Royal Flying Doctor helicopter because there's a noise issue. And I can say that that noise issue is a lot greater than the skydiving operation. So I put performance to promise, and my able assistant, Melissa, is now going to take over. And I sat at home with this little ovens and I simply recorded on Saturday morning as I was having breakfast and I said let's see what happens so Mel could you share please stop the clocks Oh, 
You want to try and then we'll move here and see if we can get better. Just while the background's happening, I recorded the skydiving operation over the house. And we'll try this one here. So at the airport today, I have met some very interesting ladies, and one of the things we're going to ask them is, how do you enjoy using the airport and the skydiving going away from your use of the airport? Yes, I think I'm probably would because I'm concerned about the um, liability to hang around too far and continue right. to continue with the business. Right. Uh, but personally, I might. The airport's not going 24-7. It's not like the next door to an international airport where it's going 24-7. Exactly. It's yeah. just a bit too much. And the flying school, seating flight, you can make it a little bit. It has to be the airport. Trying to keep, yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you feel about the noise impact in town? Oh, I don't know. No, I can't see it. Okay, so the scale of importance coffee first, and then anything after that is, is, a, is a bonus. Yes, and I think, I think the businesses should be encouraged, okay. not swept under the carpet or taken away to some extent. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Enjoy the coffee. So, council do have those voice files, and the the late the, the important part is that the traffic along Queen Vic and and our street Thomson Ave was drowned, was not drowned out by the aircraft. This is the reverse. The traffic, be it a truck and or a vehicle, drowned out the noise of the aircraft. The lady who spoke there is. Uh, I think she's a frequent user of the coffee club there, the hang around. If you who hasn't had a hang around coffee, great right place. And so and I also took a landing aspect of the aircraft coming. And so for those who wish to destroy what is a great business in town, it's a community hub. People come to the airport to see what the activity is, to see the uh, skydivers flying their trade, and it's spectacular to see. But for the people to want to take that down because of some perception that noise is a problem, it's not unlike having a windmill and saying, well, now I'm getting really sick. Um, so I'm probably close to time. Thank you. I'm out of here. Thank you very much. Now, Councillor yeah. Maru to ask. Yes, you. Mr. Poor, I, I've just got one question. So um, so some people have come to me with um, challenges about noise. So. How does that how does that example exist when you're not by road, you're very rural, and a flight path has changed in, in time, and now you have what they're explaining is a, a pretty grunty climb right over their property rurally. So I get in the airport and when you've been there for ages, but if there has been a flight path change and it's now impacting, what would your answer be to that in terms of... Okay, if I was sitting on the board of a uh, review committee, I would suggest that the operator take, in, take on board the fact that the problem area can occur if he's doing concentric circles up to the to the drop zone because that noise profile goes out. What you wouldn't hear, or you couldn't hear there, that the Thorpe Street lady has no issue with it. Okay. So, yes, Brent, that's important. But I, I feel that if it's like in any community, it's going to be a mixture of, of, of and a matrix of views. So maybe the operator could take a much further track out. Oh, when we when I jumped, we went quite far out. We went over Kaiteri and then came back over the drop zone. So he could go much further out and then come back in again. Um, yes, there is a noise, there's some noise factor, but certainly not the extent of shutting it down. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Oh. Excuse me, Chair. Can we just confirm that Zoom actually, the people on Zoom can hear us? Because I've seen some messages yeah, saying that there's it. challenges with it. Just message them back. And that would... Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, we're having the usual. It's all him, sir. Yeah. Now, just for our new Motawaka Aquatic Centre with four pools, is it possible for the community board to show its support of this long-awaited project with a cash 
donation from our discretionary fund. Number two, I have been asked by a member of our Motawaka community whether with such a tight housing situation in our town, are our social housing provisions being closely monitored to ensure they are kept fully occupied? And the final one, while on the topic of housing, I'm frequently asked by responsible young men contemplating marriage and raising a family, where is the Tasman District Council considering new housing areas in the Motuaka District with decent sized sections of between 600 and 800 square meters? Thank you, Lady Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Schechner. Now, um, you guys have got 10 minutes. Just Mrs. Schechner. Um, dear Motueka Community Board, I'm here today to speak about the Code of Conduct Report that's in, on the new agenda. We shared our opinion about the content of the report to you, with you, so there is no need to repeat this. Instead, I would like to make a few comments about the draft policy that is attached to the report before you decide if you want to have a Code of Conduct or not. I think it is a very valid starting point to clearly define the scope of this particular board. The Auditor General attempted to compare all community boards around the country, but had to say that this was not possible, as the boards vary significantly from one another in regards of how many people each member represents or what delegations they are receiving from their governing body. It is a very relevant observation and could be given effect by clearly stating this board's role in relation to their status and powers. In some instances, community boards are expected to act as if they were the local authority. And in some instances, their unique character of being an incorporate, unincorporated body prevails. I think this needs to be reflected in a code of conduct policy. Other code of conduct policies often make a reference to section 39 of the LDA, that a code must be well understood by elected and members and the public, which is a necessary point in relation to the principle of natural justice. Your draft does not include this, and I just suggest this to be added, sorry. In your draft policy, it is written, nothing in this section of the code is intended to limit robust debate. In my view, this wording is too broad to give a clear understanding of what robust debate actually means for this board. We find a good wording in the community board, the community board code of conduct for the Wiper District Council. It reads, adhering to this code does not in any way limit a member's ability to hold a lo the local authority and fellow members to account or constructively challenge and express concerns about decisions and processes undertaken by their local authority. Another point is in relation to the investigation process for code of conduct complaints. Your draft does not define materiality or different procedures for non-material and material breaches, and it does not acknowledge final constraints for handling investigations. This point was actually communicated to council by LGNZ last year. They said, noting that your process does allow for non-material complaints to be handled differently, and in some cases to be referred to the board of the chair or oh la la, to the board of the chair, oh la la, that's my first mistake, noting that your process does allow for non-material complaints to be handled differently, and in some cases to be referred to the board or the chair of the board to sort out. I think it would be good to be more specific in the policy about material and non-material breaches of the code, because other community boards have included this in their policy. 
My last point is about a possible conflict of interest for councillors. You councillors already have your code of conduct in place. And it seems to me that the code that already applies to you is much more strict or stricter. So if you now vote in favour of this draft code, which appears less strict and has a different investigation process, it could be seen that you try to avoid the strictness of the code that already applies to you. For example, if you post something controversial on social media, you can then say it was done in my role as a community board member and not in my role as a councillor, which means in consequence, you have an advantage compared to all other councillors. Just as a reminder, when this board voted on a code of conduct policy last time, I mean the board of 2019, all councillors abstained from voting. I think that was absolutely the right decision. And finally, just to be clear, even if you vote against adopting any code of conduct today, there are still a lot of tools available to sanction a member's behavior if necessary. For example, through your standing orders or a number of other acts. In my view, this vote today is not only about if you want to have a code of conduct at all or not, and if yes, which one? Given the background that we are all aware of and how a code of conduct investigation was performed against one of your board members last year that caused the spending of almost 40,000 of ratepayers' money, I think it is fair to say that this vote today is also about if you uphold your oath of office and act in the best interest of your community. Thank you. Are there any questions or points of clarification from the board for Shakina? Thank you. And those, um, that statement that you read, that's the exact one that you sent through to the board. The statement that you've just read, is that the exact one that was emailed to the board or would no. you like to table that? Yeah, if you want. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, so that is our public forum. Um, so I'm going to move to discretionary funds. Mm -hmm. We're just going to skip so that um, we've got, I'm assuming we've got someone from Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and from the Historical Wharf. Great. And is there, are you going to speak for that? Okay. So, do we deal with Claire first? <laughs> Claire's going to speak on behalf of the historical. Yep. <laughs> Take it away. Um, I would just like to speak on behalf of the Waterwake Historical War Group. Um, I have a conflict of interest anyway, so it might as well be me that talks about it. Um, so basically, this is a project uh, that's very dear also to TDC with the uh, the historical walk down by the Mock Key. There's a lot of damage down uh, with the stone wall, um, and it is a little bit of a health and safety issue. So what we would like to do is, is restore it to its original state construction uh, we've still got a few ideas on that because technology has come a long way since we last looked at this um, a number of years ago so at the moment what's happened is uh, Steve Richards from TDC he's consulted with uh, five out of the seven EWIS um, so far and um, and part of that is to get the archaeological report updated, which is um, a few years old. The cost of that, uh, which is included in the application, is approximately $1,400, which um, EDC are happy to pay 50%, as in Steve Richards' department. Mm -hmm. And um, so I would like to ask the community board if they would fund the other half um, so that we can progress to the next step, um, which 
we can't do until we get this updated archaeological report. There was an issue about what the uh, the ownership was. So as part of the application as well, you'll see um, there's been an investigation and TDC does own the historical wharf. So we need to do these individually. But I'm wondering. You've got a question. Do you? Yes. yes. Great. You talked to me about the history part. I've read that. That's a big report <laughs> on the ownership of the water. Who had it, who didn't have it, who transferred it, who transferred it. So it's this application, is the fund holder TDC, so it's the money's just going to Steve Richard's budget or is or are you paying? No, it's uh, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a murky one. So it's sort of TDC. Steve Richards has really been volunteering to do this. It, it doesn't. It actually doesn't sit with any TDC department. Funds go to. So, uh, the, so the funds will go to TDC. Okay, thank you. The short answer. Yeah. On that basis, I'll be a bit. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. Clear. Yeah. Where does the historical association sit with this? Like, how on board are they, and do they are they going to fund any of it? The, or are we going to get this report and then it goes nowhere? Um, the, did you say the historical? I couldn't hear. Yeah, the so historical society, association, society. whatever their um, operating name is. Um, it's the Historical Heritage Society or something that's because it's a different one for um, C, for sure. Um, so they're basically, when, when this report comes through, um, we have to give them a presentation and then they say yes or no as to whether we're allowed to go forward. But they've been on board with it and they're particularly interested in getting the iwi on board. So that's why we're doing that. So I think if we do, Steve Richard's going to talk to the other two and then we have to wait three months for them to come back with any queries and then we can go ahead and present it to the Historical Wharf Association Heritage. Mm. So um, we're going to be applying for lotteries funding as well um, and, and, and TDC funding. So it's going to be a big partnership with lots of organizations because it's really important that we especially with the it's not so much sea level rise it's the waves that they're, they're absolutely slamming um the rocks um, Yes, there is a representative from them. Uh, you would know that, David, because you've been to one of the meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think his, I think my concern not, is I that if you will give you the $700, it, does that stop as a cost for the community board? Or are you going to come back with special projects and other things? And does the 700 that we're putting forward in the Steve Richards, obviously in the report says he's going to match it, I'm just concerned how much money we spend before we actually know we're going to get a buy-in to actually do something. So the 700 for the report, uh, that's the first thing we need to do. We can't do anything until we get that updated report because it's too it's too out of date. Um, and there is an application also in for special projects. Um, I guess it comes down to how important you think the history is of Model Waker. If, if you don't think it's important, don't give the money. If you do think that uh, preserving our history is important, then give the money. It's I it guess it's down to you really what what your priorities are. For me, I love the history and I would really love to see that restored to back to how it was, so that people in the next generation can enjoy it. I move. Oh, okay. Um, moved by um, Councillor Maru and second by Board Member Armstrong. No, no. 
We just grant those in favour. Sorry, we sorry, we do. So, yeah, we, we can put it out individually because it's a clear conflict for that one. Oh, oh I see. Sorry. Any again? It's not to me, is it? <laughs> well, I mean, you can be against, that's fine, and we can re record it as against, it's totally up to you. It doesn't, it won't, if there's, there's enough fours for it to still go through. Gosh, my tool with this one. I'm going to look. I'm going to be a team player. Okay, so all the yeah, papers. I love history. Yeah. <laughs> Carrie. That's not something. <laughs> um, and just. You're not a beach there. Thank you. <laughs> just to note, we did have an application in from um, Twicker Writing um, for Disabled Association. However, because it falls within the financial year that we've just given money, um, they'll have to come back in the next financial year. So um, I'd like to invite um, Tracy Nielsen up from Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Um, yeah, so we are in a 25th year of operation, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. We're not for profit, although my salary and our rent, um, I'm employed by New Zealand Police, as they see early intervention is really important. We've got probably, t I think, 201 um, children, young people on the programme right across the region from sort of out towards Walker Walker, and we've got quite a few over in Mahua. Here in Motueka, um, it's the perfect sort of storm for a community organisation, tricky to get funds, the needs increase, the complexity of the children's needs have increased, cost of living crisis. Um, so we've made the difficult decision to shut our waiting list to May the 1st. When I applied, we had four children from this region on the waiting list. That's now actually gone up to six, but we've got a total of 45 Tamariki waiting on the waiting list. So we go out into the community and we recruit volunteer mentors, but obviously we have to screen, train, supervise and select them. Um, and then they check in regularly with the young person. The people on the young children who are applying for our program may have um, been brought up by grandparents, there's quite a few in this region, may have an incarcerated parent, have a parent with addictions, or they may have both parents or caregivers in the household, but they may have a high needs um, sibling, for example. So we've been supported well by you guys in the past. Um, our cash runway at the moment isn't looking as good as it usually does, um, but we're getting there. We'd love to be opening our waiting list again May the 1st, and so that's why we presented this to you today. Happy. 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 Okay, so um, say moved by Councillor Walker, second by Councillor Maru. All in favour? Aye. Aye. And then again, no. Thank Kerry. you very Thank much. You. Okay. Yeah, okay. So now we can and we've got um it's Robo Grable. Yeah. It's kind of come by Zoom, I understood. Oh, I think your so you can have So we have uh, yep, presentation. Great. Hello, can you hear us? Good afternoon. I hear you loud and clear. Can we hear you? Can you hear me? Can you give me a thumbs up? I can hear you, but you can't hear me. Um, I can't quite hear you. Can you go down to your audio and check your speaker? So on that. What have you got? Come to the new employee that might be. Is the sound oh, turned up at your end? Yeah. Yeah. I remember I would try one of the two. Hello. Uh, yes, we can hear you. Welcome. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'll, I've got a short update here from Dan, who's been looking after the works happening on site. Um, I'll just do a quick run through, um, pretty much what's on the report. So, um, 
the, the path from a noise street um, uh, through to Parkland School, that's pretty much all finished now. I just need some grass to grow in the sports fields. Um, we did that small bit of footpath widening uh, at the roundabout at Old Wharf Road. Um, the Wallet Street bus stop is uh, relocation of that's underway and on track for completion late March, early April. Uh, work's happening opposite the Lower Mutri store. Uh, that's all going well. And uh, we're due to receive pricing for the rest of the work on Whakarewa Street and up past Street, past the Marae, uh, hopefully this week. Any questions? Hi, Rob. Um, looking at the TDC website, and it had a picture of the bus stop outside mm. Swallow Street. I'm not sure if that was the real picture or whether that was sort of an architectural view of what it is. So my question is, is we've got this beautiful library. Is it going to be aesthetically pleasing from the street? Uh, it's hard to tell from the picture. I don't know whether that is the true picture. Yeah, so it's actually a bus stop that we had on um, Queen Street in Richmond um, when we did the upgrade there. It was previously outside the um, police station and it wasn't a good spot for a bus stop, so they decided to move it up outside the warehouse. And yes, it's attractive and architectural and should fit in with the library uh, appropriately. I, I can send you a photograph. The one uh, that you had on the um, on the Facebook post, the promotion that that is the actual bus stop because that's the one from outside the police station. So it's got that curved roof. So that's the one that will be going out there. That's yeah. that's one that he was talking to. So it is the one that you've posted online is the same bus stop. It's apparently in storage, been in storage for a couple of years. Yep, I can possibly find a show, photo to share on screen. Um, anyway, I think that's clarified things. Any, any more questions? Yeah. No. I think that was that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for dialing in. Thanks for no the update. Problem. Okay. All good. See you. Later. See ya. Okay. Um, so we're looking at 8.2, the adoption of the Multiwaker Community Board Code of Conduct. Um, just before Mr. Towns seems starts, um, I think we allow um, presentation and any questions from the board, but I am suggesting that uh, given information and an email I received from TDC uh, closer to the time of the meeting, so not enough time for the board to, to read and deliberate on, that we, uh, under section 25.2D of the standing orders, that um, the decision for this is tabled. Um, so I don't know if I have to pass the motion for that first, or if we do that after, would you like to? I suggest you do it after the... Yeah. All right. So over to you. Cool. Uh, Tēnā koutou e te whānau. Uh, you have before you today a report and proposed code of conduct for the Mutui Community Board. Uh, codes of conduct are common features uh, in local government. They set the minimum standards for ethical behaviour. Uh, codes of conduct provide effective, uh, should promote effective working relationships between board members between board members and uh, council and between board members and the public. Uh, a code of conduct sets um, various boundaries and standards on the on behaviour and provides a means of resolving uh, situations as they arise. As you can see from the report, uh, staff view is that the proposed code does meet the legislative requirements of a code of conduct. Um, however, we have made some suggestions uh, in the resolutions as to how the um, code could be improved uh, 
one um, to make it consistent with the council policy and the other um, to make it uh, more robust and in line with the LGNZ guidance. Uh, I note that the code applies to uh, the appointed members on the board, whether or not they uh, vote for it. And I note that uh, in order for the uh, code to be adopted, uh, it requires a 75% 75% uh, of the members present uh, to vote for it. I'm available to answer any questions the board may have. Um, yeah, I've just got one around that. So obviously, just for everyone else in the room, our councillors have stepped away from the table. Um, so my question is, if the board were to vote, is it 75% of us that are here sitting at the table? Since they're not abstaining, they've stepped away. They would have to leave the room to not be present for this. <laughs> but I do note that the code applies to them whether or not they vote for it. I did. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's more because of what happened last time. Um, the councillors abstained from voting, believing there was a conflict for them. And so the board actually didn't have, they didn't adopt the new code of conduct. So um, we just want some clarity around if now that they have left the room. Do you mind noting in the minutes that the councillors have left the room and that the four community board members remain and they still have a quorum. Yeah. So so under this current quorum, 75% can could pass the code of conduct. Yeah. So that's just for just for our clarification. Um do the current board members that are still present have any questions? Oh yes. So we're gonna we're just gonna ask questions or points of clarification because we're gonna try and avoid uh, debate so that we can pass this motion. Is the statements made in your report your view, or you believe they're legally binding? Sorry, could you clarify the question? Uh, well, I would have known it two seconds ago, and now I've got eight pages in line because I don't know how to use computers. But um, so uh, you, you, you've you stated that if it isn't voted on, the previous one still stands. That's that's based on legal definition or your opinion? That is the council view. Okay. Yeah. Do you, any further questions? I got lots here, but I've lost my pages. Okay. Uh, yeah, for me. Uh, Tech guys here. Um, what, what, what happened? I'll get my glasses, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got because you've you, you've we have a clear uh, difference of view here with um, the uh, uh, code of conduct that we're meant to already know about, which we weren't presented with, but this is just, once again, yeah, we, yeah, won't we won't get into that into side of things. So I just want to establish that it's the council's view, not a legally binding one from a lawyer. So through the chair, I cannot give a you my legally binding view in an open meeting because that would be legally privileged. So what I've presented you as the council's view on the legality of this thing. Okay. I think that's um what Yes. No, just questions. Just questions. Yeah. Oh, so at the start before Mr. Townsend presented, I suggested that we um put forward a motion under section twenty five point 2D, yeah, yeah, um, but I still want you to have the opportunity to ask any questions before you decide whether or not you want to carry that motion or the ones that are in the report. Um, sorry, Deputy Chair. So I would like to, I'd like to move the motion to, to 
sure we get more information because there was an email that went out this afternoon that the other board members weren't privy to, which um, is quite odd considering we're, it's on something that we need to vote on. So um, I don't know if you're aware of this email, but anyway, it wasn't sent to us, but it's about our code of conduct. So I would feel more comfortable if we uh, had a discussion and then had a look at it next month, or, in my opinion. Thank you. Um, I don't know how to go about this, but seeing as if there is something in the report here, I would like to have it noted in the minutes that the current board, to the absolute best of my knowledge, and to the other people's, that we have not been presented with the 2013 Code of Conduct. We haven't signed it. We haven't had anything to do. 2013 Code of Conduct or the 2016 Code of Conduct or the 2019 Code of Conduct. I think that needs to be noted. And in light of we need to obtain more information in regards to council correspondence with LGNZ, it's very important for us to all the information before yeah. so what I suggest is we um yes we can note that um that we don't we haven't been presented well we weren't presented at the beginning with that 23rd code of conduct however um I suggest that we table this maybe workshop um so we get that information yeah um saying that we have the 2013 for our workshop for the code of conduct workshop that we did do um, so I will move a motion. Oh, sorry, board member Armstrong. Well, the questions. Yes, sorry. Um, the, the code that we had workshopped, and it's, that we sort of agreed on, just this workshop a couple of weeks ago, um, that has now been presented as, a, as something to, to approve. Um, is it the, the board's thought or your thought that we can still make some amendments to that? Or is that sort of sealed now? You know, we did have about four or five questions that were circulated around board members as to whether, you want, for instance, the $50 donation um, oh, yes. present thing. That's got hardly yellow, but um, is that going to stay or could, could we debate whether that should rise to, say, 100? There's um, other things there that. I hadn't realised during the workshop, but now seeing the report a few days ago when I saw the, the agenda, that there's no mention of the treaty in, in there anywhere, um, which disturbs me a bit. Um, so that's another question I had. And there's also... Perhaps I could ask, answer the first. Sorry. And uh, perhaps I could answer the first couple and then... Okay. Otherwise, I'm going to forget. Mm -hmm. Uh, so in terms of whether you can amend the draft, if the resolution is passed that you want to table this and come back to another date, uh, you can then workshop it and make amendments to that. If you would like to make amendments to it as part of this meeting and the, and the thought of passing it, uh, then you will each amendment will be separately voted on in a separate resolution. Uh, and if that passes and fails, the code will be updated. The second question was similar about, about the treaty. Oh, about the treaty. Uh, again, that is a matter for the board yeah, to consider. Thank you. I feel easy about that. Uh, third one was um, the issue about the basically the decision tree that the um, board member Hughes particularly liked at the workshop. To the clarity of it, but then we like had this. Um, that was plain of thought. Thank you. Um, decision tree. Decision, no, yeah, the fact that, that sort of the, the, the well expressed this the draft that we're looking at adopting sort of says, okay, we'll include all that stuff we wrote, but. Um, in fact, it's all pretty much null and void because council's um, procedure for 
because all the things uh, will, will override it anyhow. And I had suggested when we this first popped up a week or so ago that perhaps I could move to the mission to staff teams or some of us buy off to do it to to rewrite that such that the two would come together rather than having one there for no point whatsoever and then another one overriding. You know what I'm saying? I do. And again, uh, unless you want to amend that by resolution as part of this meeting, it'll be a matter for the board to take away. So, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, that's part of an email that was sent out um, this afternoon, which was clarifying oh. about the what code of conduct supersedes the other, which is why I feel we need to table it. We haven't seen the email yet. So I think we do. I suppose if you can't say it, then. Well, yeah, I want to. I want rather share it with the board so that you have time to deliberate yeah. on it. Hence why I put forth that um, suggestion prior. Oh, I'd like to second Okay, thanks. May I um, have a yes, you may, but I'm also just going to mention that uh, when we get to the Chair's report, uh, because we've had a public forum on the subject, we can get into more discussion then. But fire away with your question. Uh, I ask that the board officially requests the redacted information from Tasman District Council to LGNZ. Okay. How do we go about that? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what information you're referring to, so we need to get some clarification about what that is. It's in, uh, it, it's one email which seems to be the crux of the changing of an opinion. So we, as a board, need to know what that information was that changed the opinion. This is an email between LG and Z and TDC. It, well, it's possibly an email. It's completely redacted everything. There's just nothing. It's just a page of black. And for me, in the day, in today's age of transparency, <laughs> I feel that. And as it is the basis for the Tasman District Council and LGNZ. I wonder if we pick that part up in the, okay. the yep. chairs section. Yes, we'll do. And we just focus on uh, the report here. So if we've got no other questions for Mr. Townsend, then um, we basically either accept one of the motions that have been put forward in the report. If anyone wants to move any of these motions, which there are four. And, um, the motions in the report yep. presented by... I can put them up if you like. Good. Or, because I've just had advice that we put that forward. If nobody accepts it, then the um, this stays tabled as per suggested at the start. Yep. The, the, if, if I may, through you, Madam Chair, and, and please jump in and correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding of standing orders is that if you table a motion and it's not moved or seconded, then it's described as failed for want of a mover or failed for want of a seconder. And so then it lies on the table and the opportunity rests with the chair to bring it back. So when I heard you talking at the beginning, I heard talk that that was what you would like to do, that you'd like to have some sort of a workshop and then you'd like to revisit it. So that is one mechanism. The other mechanism is that you go through and you seek to, uh, when you start debating the motion, to alter the um, uh, the resolutions to suit a, 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 the purpose of the people debating to it. That, uh, that second option might be quite complex to achieve. Oh, well, I was actually going to say through the chair, um, if the... What I suggest you do is, is we adjourn for a minute and I'll assist Mel with a resolution that talks about tabling this until a later date. Mm -hmm. And then you can vote on, on that. Okay. And if that fails, then we can... Yep, happy for that, everybody. Happy yep. for that? Yep. Okay, so we're adjourned for... A cup of tea. Two, two minutes. <laughs> we can... Hello. Oh, actually, no, we can't have a cup of tea to come back and we can wait. Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 Sorry.
So we can. I think talk about that later. This, yeah, I think so. And if if he's concerned about the extent of protection, then that's a different matter. Yeah, I think that so he uses he seek. Yeah, yes, okay. Yeah, okay. Yes, okay. Yes, yes. Yes, okay. Yes, okay. Yes, okay. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, Still down to us, he's right. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh. Well, she hoped to stay to live to do like she's in Spain, but she still can vote. She just doesn't make it. It's changed. Oh. So, thank you. Do you know for her? Oh, okay. Well, they're not worried about it. Yeah. They, they hit that change. I'll triple check that when you get back to the office, yeah. but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, uh, I'm almost certain it is. Yeah. yeah. So, I. I you to the next meeting. Yeah, no, 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 you're not, re you're adding to, you're not replacing. Yeah. 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 Okay. So if, so if I zoom in, let's try to count, just another delete that. I'm, I'm, I'm just so, yeah. 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 even though I'm not yeah. present. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I don't think. Yeah. 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 Right. Especially if they are yeah. 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 when we carry, that's what we're so so how do we receive Yes, to say no. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to do those two. And so, these will go. If there's only four, they're not going to say. Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I'm going to do the same. I think really early in the day. very late. I might just say, I'm not going to do that. I was going to say, yeah. Have a separate ear in your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I think, hey, do you need to vote either on each clause or replace them? Yeah, I thought we replace them. They don't think you've done them. Yeah, we just removed the others. We removed the other ones. Yeah. If if that passes. Oh yes, sorry. Right. Yeah. So we'll move these. It's a good idea. Oh, do you want me to put that up on these? Move it, please. Just, just resolution one or two. Yeah. See the report. Yeah. Yeah. Got that. 
So when you when you ask for, when you ask for people to vote on, you want someone to vote. Okay. So you can't tell them what to do, but yeah. um, they want to move uh, resolutions one and two. Yeah, then you fun. vote on those. So we just we only need to move one. Yeah, I got like. Oh, you number two. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then if you get a second that plan, then you vote on that. You would as soon as you do that, just to see the disappear. Okay, do the options, but you've gone with the new option, so that's fine. Yeah. I can make it bigger. The easiest way to do it is to probably move it to the chair. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then the one of the other four members to second it, then have you vote. Right. And that's giving you the delay. Okay, cool. No, no, awesome. Thank you. I won't share it because you'll, like, you'll be like, yeah, it's also like, you'll read that for me. Or do you want me to share? Yep. Yes, that's probably. fine because then people yep. can read it and they can see. Um, we're going to. Big enough yet? Bigger? Okay. I can do with my good. You're good to see. Good. Oh, I don't know. Who's going to. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. She'll read it out anyway. So I'm not sharing this for us. This is too hard. It's actually both, but that's yellow's new. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I, I, I have, so we still, we're all uh, start again. We re adjourn the meeting. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, I have, I, I, I have a serious concern with this and I need to, you know, I'm, I'm a novice here, I, I'm learning, so I need to, I need to object to the content of the report. I, I, is that what we do? The, 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 so you I, want no, to no disrespect, Lee, um, but I, I, I need to object, if I can, if I'm able to, to the content of the report supplied by, okay. by Lee. All right. So I think, so if I may, through you, Madam Chair, I think the way to do that, uh, I have another look, but I think the way to do that is that when the motion is put to receive the report, you okay. vote against receiving the report. Okay, thank you. Right, so I'll, I'll do them in two parts then. So the first, um, this first is that um, I move that the Mutweka Community Board receives the adoption of the Mutweka Community Board Code of Conduct report. And then I... And then so the, the Deputy yep. Chair seconding that. Or for in favor against. I'm against. So we'll have it recorded that um board member Hughes is against receiving the report. And then we will move on to point two, which um overrides point two in the report. Okay, so this is a new one. Um then I'll move that resolves. Resolves to table the adoption of Mutuika Community Board Code of Conduct 2024 report pursuant to standing orders to be further considered at the later Community Board meeting. I'd like to second. Right. I get what you're saying. Yeah. So, yeah. Chair, I'd like to get Lee's advice on this because. Um, I wonder if by doing it in two parts, if board member Hughes has declined to receive the report, then I'm not sure about this, but I think that creates a problem with him then having a vote on whether or not he should mm -hmm. um, take a position on item two, because he hasn't voted to receive the report. Oh, However, the report has been received by the majority, so it's been received by the board, and he can then vote on the second 
yeah, having just worked that through my head, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, comfortable. I, I agree. The board is you know, voted to see the report. Just again, you can uh, choose what's what is made to you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I don't know, I've just moved that, but I just have a question that when that, so this is tabled, this will be coming back as is. We will not be getting a new report or will we get a new report? Depending on what happens between now and the next meeting, this right. report may be updated. Okay, that, that's good. Thanks for clarifying that. Okay, so based on that, um, I move number two, that um, this is tabled for further consideration and allotted in the community. Do I have a seconder? Deputy Chair Hart, all four? Yeah. yeah anyone against? Okay, carried. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, right. Um, Thank you, Lee. Lee. Yeah, Thank you. We're out there for a while. Okay. Now, right. Stuff, what was that? The information we've got. Um, okay, I am going to jump with council. We're going to jump to special projects so that um, Tony Grant, so, yeah. and then Stephen. Page. Oh, yeah, we'll do. Oh, yes. Oh, right. Yeah. Did you ask you for a question? Yes, next round of communications. Can you type it? Specific. Fire is changed. Um, I was thinking we need to be starting this through. So in the chairs, I will only have um, Steve Dell. Steve Dell. Hello, Captain. Hello, Captain. Your seat's got all the power. It's there. She's just got oh, it. Thank you so much. I had completely forgotten about it. <laughs> she thought you might have special projects. Oh. Okay. Instead of waiting for all right. So let's go back to Chair's report. Um, because you're in there. Okay. All right, thanks, councillors. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm just going to try and jump um through so that we can have our staff members um speak. So um We'll go to the Chair's report, but I'm going to do it in stages. So first I just um, move that the board receives the Chair's report. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so we'll go for discussion. We are going to jump to... Uh, we'll actually jump to, should we do committee updates and then that's got Councillor Dowler's action on it and then Mr. Fat can speak to that. So I'm going to jump to point four of the Chair's report. Um, so there's just a brief update in there, but um, mainly we're going to focus on 4.4. So. Mr. Bat, would you like to join us? And Mr. Dowler can also speak to that point. It was an action in our action list as well, but it's also part of the committee update. So maybe so this is about the uh, skydiving operator uh, aerodrome noise. And maybe we'll start with you, and then Councillor Dowler can add his bit. Sure. Um, so we've received um, a lot of complaints about the Waikato Aerodrome from different parties, and we're responding to them on a case by case basis. Noise in the I mean, by way of example, the most recent complaint we have numbers some nine pages. So um, it's a continuous review of existing rules and regulations. 
Uh, we've recently completed a compliance check of the aerodrome and the aerodrome was deemed to be effectively managed and, and well operated. Um, in regards to the in-flight operation, we've had a discussion, um, Councillor Dowler and myself sat down with the directors of in-flight and um, encouraged them to look at whether they can bring back one of their other aircraft and uh, currently looking at doing that at the moment. It's currently under heavy maintenance. And as soon as that's been finished, it hopefully we'll be back into service. Um, and we've set up a working group within Council to review the rules and the latest complaint to see that we are meeting our regulatory requirements. Um, I suppose in this forum, one of the context is that noise on the aerodrome is sort of deemed industrial noise, noise as the plane takes off as aircraft noise. And then you've also got other rules when you get out beyond the aerodrome around different rules and regulations. So it's not a clean cut answer. Um, what else is there? The other thing I would like to table is that there's very limited airspace above Montreal Aerodrome. You've got controlled airspace above Nelson Airport, and you've got the Western Ranges over there. So when any of the aircraft is actually directed somewhere, they usually ended up directed in a holding pattern above Montreal um, Valley. So that causes a problem in itself. And we've made an offer to one of the regular complainants to sit down and sort of express the views and, and what actions are being taken. Um, it's probably all I have to say on it. Yeah, well, all I can just update is is actually what's happening with the with the aircraft. It's the everybody would probably be aware of the blue plane that used to fly around here. Uh, that was noisy when it started, and then uh, after a lot of complaints several years ago, the company at the time spent over ten thousand dollars developing a new propeller for it, which actually halved the noise emittance, which was everybody seemed to settle down. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Freighter, who were the main complainants on the day that lived on King Edward Street. They said it was absolutely awesome, the difference that it made, and their compl complaints actually stopped. Unfortunately, the plane was removed, taken away down south by in flight when they took the uh, business over. So they realised that there are issues here now, so they're in the process of getting it back. The plane's 14 years old. Every seven years, it has to go in for a maintenance period. 14 years is a full maintenance, which is structural. They have found some very minor issues which those planes have uh, at the 14 year service. So there's parts coming out from Europe, apparently on a boat, which has to go the long way around due to the war. Container we dropped in Australia and then the container will eventually make its way to New Zealand. Um, hopefully it's not going to be held up too much, but they're talking when we first met, they were hoping it was going to be back here flying in Monawaka and that noisy plane gone within three months. That's the latest update they could give us, and that was as of last Friday. So it's no longer with the plane. Mm -hmm. So it's don't been, expect to see it's it going to be painted. Yeah, oh. I understand it's part of the part of the thing, but yeah, enough. But that's at this stage. Let's get it back here, and and hopefully everybody will be happy, like the people were years ago. That the noise is pretty much limited as what they can. <laughs> One of the reasons that I had picked up too from another person outside it was when they do the high jumps. At 18,000 feet or something like that, they're actually in the airspace where the engine little planes fly over. So, quite often, they are shifted away from the area where the planes fly from Auckland to Christchurch or whatever, and that, that can push them out a little bit too. So, it's only randomly that that happens, but that is some, one of the reasons why sometimes a plane is where you wouldn't expect it to have to go while the people are paying for that extra height jump. That's it. Um, now recall in some email correspondence, may, may have been to a complainant, and I got copied in, um, that you, TDC, were looking at um, the air corridor as a there's measure a, to control. There's an opportunity, or well, there's the possibility of introducing an air noise corridor. Yeah. But um, I did spend a little bit of time on the air noise committee at Nelson Airport. And one of the interesting things is the complainants tend to not live in the vicinity of the aerodrome. They tend to be quite remote. And so the remote, the most prolific complainant here is actually over four kilometres away from the aerodrome. So even if we did introduce an air noise, it's not going to make any difference to that person's residence. The yeah, so there's, I think they've done three things to that old plane, which they can't do to the new plane, which is the tyres are especially they're larger and they, they reduce the drag when the plane's taxiing on the airfield. 
the prop's different, and there's something with the manifold of the muffler, um, which all reduces the noise of it. So you're looking at fixing some things up. So uh, as it stands, does the plane comply as it is now? Um, the current plane, yeah. As far as we're aware, yes. Um, the noise is one issue, but of course, the the con resource consent seem to be another issue. And for myself, I've seen how the council actively look at the resource consents for other things. I'll bring up one example: uh, the use of a uh, a toilet or the use of a uh, oven or the use of a sink has actually brought on court action. So I understand there's some issues with the resource consents. Are they all up to date? Are they meeting all of their consents? Um, one of the regular complainants that we, that's challenging all aspects of the aerodrome is causing a lot of costs for the ratepayers at the moment has raised one of the issues that the rules, as I understand it, is that um, the designation that sits over top of Motueka Aerodrome enables Motueka Aerodrome to operate as an, as an airfield. So anything that an aerodrome can do needs to operate comes mm -hmm. under that designation. Um, the history beyond that designation is part of the parcel of what we're going to be checking okay. going forward. Thank you. Uh, further questions for the board? Thank you for coming out and speaking with us. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Now, do we have any comments on section four of the chair's report? Because I'm happy with everything in there. And no further updates on your committees if you want to add, because I'm going to jump to um, that actually also covered section six community concerns. Um, I'm going to jump to just so we can get um, Mr. Strange. I'm going to jump to number seven items from the board and um, move that over to Deputy Chair Hart. And then, um, so do you want to come and join on the yeah. first and then the board? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, Stephen just said he thought he should have brought a plane along. <laughs> but, uh, so I'll get um Claire to kick off and then Tony yep. will jump in. Okie dokie. So um so this is looking like um a good plan for the special project. So we've got the library sessions uh, for Q&A kicking off tomorrow and then another one on Thursday. That's for people to vote, ask questions, have a look at the locations of the projects. And then um, Julie at TDC here is going to be helping with the votes. And then meeting with TDC staff by the end of May, looking at completing the projects by November 2025, which seemed like a really realistic date. Um, so this is, and just to highlight, this is for this is for current projects from 2022 to now. When we get the next lot of money in July, that we then look at projects for that we go out to public, that's a completely separate plan. This is just what's uh, on the table at the moment. Um, and then the next slide. Um, so just a quick update. We really felt that looking at the special projects, we needed a we needed a baseline so we know where we're at. Um, so we know where the areas to focus are. So the the Kaiteri walkway from uh, to Stevens Bay is complete. Saltwater bass improvements, they're going to do some planting on the edge and that's going to be winter planting. So that will be soon completed. 
re reinstating the seats at Dex Reserve here. Um, Tony has a wonderful diagram. Oh, um, through the chair. So I, it's great to meet you, um, Lynn and Steve himself. Uh, and this this is for Dex Reserve as well, and we'll talk about that later, but this is something that Steve was very keen to implement into the landscape plan for the library. It's um, it's a mock-up that um, the men's shed did, um, and it's an accessible, um, wheelchair-accessible table. It's um, 2.8 this way and 2.3 this, this way, so it's quite big, um, and it needs to be, but... Just wanted to bring it along and, and show you and give you an idea about it. But they are really keen. They're keen to start pulling the trigger. Uh, I think they're commercially savvy, um, to be honest. They're classic. They're really good to work with. So Steve wants to get a couple. He wants to talk to you guys about um, where they might go as well. So um, And then once we get down into the DEX project, we'll be putting a couple of these in as well. So that's to do with um, the, the library one there. Um, and then the next item was the security cameras, which is complete. I just need to get a list of the locations so that we can have a look at those. Cemetery improvements. So, so our side of that, the 8,000 is for two seats and a hand basin, and they're going to be installed by the end of this year. So we don't have to keep talking about the cemetery after December of this year. Um, and then, and then the uh, so this is good news. The picnic tables aren't going to cost as much as we thought. Um, so three thousand for the Ferro Papa Grove and the one at the foreshore, uh, and that includes a concrete pad. The the revamping of the eyesight map. Um, we've got. Um, I'll email it all out to you, but basically the map that's there at the moment is really out of date. And um, the one, yeah, so it's just uh, the other side of this building here. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's uh, so that's coming along. Basically, we found all the old files which have been updated, but we just don't know what whether whether we want to put the street names in the middle or whether we or whether we don't. So but I'll um, was just working on that at the moment. Um, another lot of good news is um, the Tent Reed Reserve Swing TDC have got an awesome swing stashed away in their cupboard. Um, so it's nine by nine eagle claw swing. So it's suitable for little ones and teenagers as well. So, so the 10,000 that was in the special projects can be used for the soft surface, the bark. And the table of the Coomeras, I've still got to get uh, dock approval, so um, bear with me on that. Uh, shade sale, the money that we save from the two picnic tables is going to go into the shade sale because that's going to cost more. And then the landscaping at Sandy Bay Maraha, that's a work in progress. The Modawaker Stone Bridge. Um, I've tracked down the stonemason and the carver, of the one that was um, as you come in for the whole set. So that's great. So we've got a starting point for that to get a quote. And I'm just working with Phil Hablin from NZTA to get approval on the on the site. And um the footpath improvements on Rat Street and High Street. Um, originally, we were thinking that uh, the stormwater improvements was going to include that curve and channel sort of improvements, but but it's not. Um, so we've had a quote for seven thousand, or well, that's for both sides, isn't it? Yeah. So. Um, so that will help with mobility, scooters and prams and things like that coming down because it's a bit of a chicane at the moment. Yeah, for the two crossings. So that's for, as you come, yeah, so one side of the road, yeah. Which road is that on? Rat so Rat, Rat and High Street, where it joins. Yeah. High Street's being done through the stormwater upgrade. Mm. Oh, that one, there. okay. So it's not costing us anything bad. Mm. 
Um, so flush toilet at um, Rewalker Cemetery Fields and the Parks and Reserve Lynn Hall is, is going to do some investigation on that just to check what services are there because there was an old house on the corner so we're just checking what the border situation was for that. Um, historical Wharf, um, we've already had a discussion on that. Uh, Steve Richards is progressing with their EWI consultation, just two more to do. And need to talk to Shane Jellyman from Rivers Reserves about the concrete pads on the tables and chairs by the bridge. Um, but I would like to say a massive thank you to <laughs> Lynn Hall, Steve Richards and Tony Strange. They're absolutely amazing to deal with. You're my favourite department. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my brace, it's because we've got a great ball. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Um, thank you, Deputy Chair Clear. I know you've put a lot of work into this and it's great to see um, things moving along there. Did you mention? Did uh, I mention? Oh, that's in the oh, that oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So much on the go. Um, yes, I'll go around for questions in a minute just to clarify, because I may have missed a few said at the start, there's two parts in your presentation. One is uh, special projects that went out to public last time of voting and um, didn't make it through by the board because we were only focusing on a certain amount of money. Then once we found it, we actually had quite a lot more. Um, you've put them in back into the fold plus uh, the you're noting voted. things that are currently out to be voted on at the moment as in ranking where yep. they're at. And it's not to say that they'll 100% get through because some of them may be out of scope once mm -hmm. council do their criteria checks. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Just to clarify that. Are there any questions from Councillor Walker and then uh, we'll Armstrong? Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you for um, yeah. um, Just the playground equipment that's going, I think you said 10 read, Is that what it's called? Re -walk? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that we have such equipment sitting in storage rooms, which is a little bit along like the bus stop. Along, I know. <laughs> I'm a little bit concerned about what TDC may have stashed somewhere. Maybe we have some more wish lists that we'd like to be addressed. Um, that aside, the swings that you're going to put out there, does that cost actually cover having them put in and maintained? And what goes underneath the swings for safety? Um, through the chair, it, it will be maintained through the operational contracts. Yep. So that'll just come form part of a it'll school of variation into the contract. Yep. yep. Um, so and the cushion fall is part of that as well. So the entire equipment will be checked. It's checked every week. Uh, now we go around all of our playgrounds and do inspections. And then they, um, yeah, it's but it's actually a bit too onerous. Um, weekly mm -hmm. is is it, we may change that to fortnightly, but. Uh, and along with that is the cushion fall, and they test how much is uh, outside the fall area. There's a bit of a criteria around that, so it'll form part of our maintenance program. Right, yeah, thank you. Uh, yep. 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 And so you're going to take the bar away, or? No? Uh, well, I don't know. I haven't been to that side. If it's okay, you know, yeah. generally we can just top it up. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think what we might be doing is extending the area a little bit. Yeah. At the moment, it's just grass. There's. Um, uh, where the swing will go, yes. so it doesn't have to be dug out. Yes, because we're going to create a, a bigger a footprint, aren't we? Yeah. Yep. yep. So our special projects that Deputy Chair's just tabled, the money that's allocated will be all that is spent on that. That's what we agreed at the meeting, if I remember. Installation. Yeah. Oh, because yep. we don't need to... Buy if you got the swing... Which was going to be, we've got a smaller swing that was going to cost 10,000. Mm. Um, we found a swing. <laughs> well, no, no, but initially we were going to buy a swing and then yeah. it wasn't going to include the installation. Now we've found a swing, the money can. So this is probably not the right time to raise it, but I'm going to raise it anyway because I'm like that. Um, ongoing, I hear that you have a works contract and so Malmac or whoever will come and make sure it's safe and whatnot, but we've got a swing that's out in um, Tasman, for example, and every time there's a weather event, what sits on the ground moves. So the height of the swing adjusts to what happens with the ground level. So what was once a safe, reachable 
distance, that changes. And I just wonder where in our special projects when we do this, do, do we cover any contingency around that there may be something that's required or is, does TDC pick that up in no, we, their We should be picking up any anomalies with any of our equipment. Okay. Well, um, in, I'll talk to you about yeah, I'll talk to you that one. Result. Um, but it was just an example. The other example would be the the picnic tables that um previous councillor Ogilvy put in, and they got damaged. Well, we had no contingency to fix those, but you know the the gentleman business who helped us with those graciously replaced that and fixed it. But I don't think he'd be going back second, third, fourth time around. And I just do wonder at times with special projects whether how do we pick up what needs ongoing work for these DC maintenance, well, I think. Yeah, well, is it? Chair, I, I believe, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Grant, I, I think that's our responsibility as, as asset owners. Mm. Uh, and if we're not maintaining our, our equipment, then, you know, I'd, I'd like you to tell me about it because I'm a, I manage the NELMAC contract. Um, so we have contract meetings, we have operational meetings, we have order meetings. Um, so mm -hmm. please, can you, can you, if you've got any issues with any of the equipment tables, send me a photo. Um, you know, we we need to we need to maintain our stuff. But maybe that's something we look into outside since you're the man to go to, so that might be a bit more helpful. Yeah. Oh, please um, tell me if there's something wrong that you find. Yeah. Yeah, appreciate that. Um, and just on that, the um, the project that Deputy Chair noted around the concrete padding at those tables. So what has been really evident is that the mower can't get close enough. So the table's got grass growing all around it. So it looks horrid, but also it's not inviting to come and sit there. Where are these tables? These are by the Mutuika Bridge. There's Bridge. one under the tree and one on the other side in a Mutuika. real random spot. I don't know, on the Rewaka side. I don't think our contractor has a weed whacker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy the bridge. Through the chair. That was the we were talking with Ben Hall about that. Oh. She advised to talk to Shane Jellyman. That's right, it's Rivers. Yeah. Yeah. Probably so, our contractor doesn't go there. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got an action to talk to Shane. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I remember that. But we thought potentially we could make it easier. The concrete went a bit wider, so oh, they yeah, would yeah. the, yeah. feel like they were going to wait for the yeah. table chair. Yep. Um, board member Armstrong. Um, just uh, to note that the five projects that missed out last time that are now in the in the presentation there, um, the the board hasn't yet resolved to to do any of those, so we can't start doing any of that work, allocating any money, sending out contracts or anything like that until we have a full resolution as part of the office. We have to have it resolved in the meeting. So, so we'll table that resolution at the next meeting? Because it, I guess you have to if you yeah. work, start working on, like, getting the ministry to start yeah. preparing for something and then say, no, we're not, it wasn't resolved, so you've got to stop that. And, yeah, well, this is where, sorry, through the yeah. chair, this is where the confusion lies because I can distinctly remember we were at a meeting uh, in the uh, board member Armstrong was chairing it. We were talking about special projects and we have this list and it was, it was agreed to go out for voting so that we knew what the community's priorities were, but it was agreed that we had funding to actually do the whole list. Um, so but I'm, I'm the only one that remembers that conversation, apparently, <laughs> in the meeting. Mm -hmm. this... I'll have to look back on the recordings because it was distinctly agreed that it would go out for public consultation yeah. to have a look at what the public's priority were, but we did have funding for the whole lot, which is why I've gone ahead and... Yeah, yeah. but we, the res resolution that was... Made we dropped to, to to drop those and it had the other six was a formal resolution for just those six. So the others mm. there's um, some housekeeping that has to happen. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Any other questions? So how can we do that so we can put that um in 
the next meeting. So then it's and can you decide to go ahead or can you do that now? Projects, can you do that now. Get a Councillor Murray. It's on the agenda as special. So, so, so through the chair, um, because it's in the chair's report and not an agenda, it's special projects anymore. I think you probably have to get a report to the community board. Just looking at Mr. Mouse for standing orders. So it's not a. So at the moment we're not in. If I understand it, we're not on special projects. We're currently in the chair's report. We are. So it's should we wait to a special project? Yeah. Should we just wait to the end? And then maybe discuss. Yeah. So it's the difference goes yeah. between a, an agenda item and the chair's report is, is, is the public. Yeah. Okay, we'll hold that yep. for the end of our fund. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We might go ahead and even if you're awake. I'm just going to quickly check through the actions to see if there were any other bits because that's coming up next. Um, I'll just quickly check. Uh, Tony, anything about the rubbish bins? Oh, no, I'm just going to quickly check before um, Tony leaves if there's any other bits in the actions of the chair's report. I think mm -hmm. just this one. One thing I'd like to bring up about the Bex Reserve, if I can, yes. just about the timeline. Joe Bywater is um, Bywater, sorry, is um, now our project manager for that. Thank God, and I've got um, also some administrative help. Um, he was going to be here to present a timeline to you, to the board. Um, unfortunately, couldn't make it, but. Um, I have been pressuring him to deliver this project within this financial year. He's um, uh, has suggested that because a uh, we we now need to go and do some ewe consultation. There is quite a uh, because the project has kind of grown from we only got we got our two hundred thousand last month um, three weeks ago. So we're now in a position of having a project that's six hundred thousand dollars. So there's some procurement processes we need to follow to secure some contractors. So. Uh, we are going to do our best to deliver the project um, as quickly as we can. It won't be in this financial year. We'll probably be committing most of the money before the end of the financial year, um, which is helpful, but delivery is unlikely to be uh, before the end of this financial year, which is June June 30. So apologies for that. It's, uh, it's grown, this project, um, probably so. Um, so that's what he wanted me to say. And he'll be coming along occasionally. I'll be coming to every meeting anyway um, to give you updates. And I'd like also to probably when we get to a point where we can wave our arms around and point and put and where we're going to put stuff, uh, like tables, uh, I'd like to invite some of the, the board to come and help and look and see where we might put some stuff. So... Oh, 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 okay. All right. Who's first? Yeah. Um, we'll be Armstrong. Um, um, item five, the long term plan. Um, uh, this question is the board wanting to make a submission to the long term plan. Uh, I'll make the comment <laughs> large on that. One of our five major things for the purpose of the community board's five or six bullet points that we all learned um, was to um, submit to the annual plan and given that the first year of the long-term plan becomes the annual plan for next year we should make a submission if we to do our job as a committee so we organize it once the, once the draft comes out which is can't be far off now you don't know <laughs> Um, then we have a workshop. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, April. Yeah. April. April. Third of um, April. Third of April. So the um, reason I've put this in here is we are looking at doing a community engagement, um, and I think the date is looking at fourth of April, four to seven o'clock at Memorial Hall, um, and that's basically trying to. We're going to use the pool as the pool um, to talk about potential of the Motueka pool um, and then other long-term plan activities and get engagement and submissions from the public. But um, as for the board putting one forward, yep, I agree. Would you be happy to help drive that, like that workshop? Okay. Yeah? 
Okay, awesome. So um, put that down as a uh, three councils won't be present. And actually, we could connect on that one. Um, now, Councillor Walker, then Councillor Maru also had questions, but it may be to do with, to do with Tony. Yes. So we'll go Councillor Maru first. Thank you. Just to um, Tony, that you're not expecting any more money from the special projects of the community board before it's all spent. What do you can observe? Uh, through the chair, no, well, we did agree on um, chair's allocation of $35,000 at the last meeting. Um, I would hope that I wouldn't have to come to get that, <laughs> but uh, it might be considered a contingency. But, um, yeah, I prefer to just see how we go through the procurement process, see what kind of, um, you know, whether we can screw our contractors down or not. But that's the, uh, that's, I mean, the community board's already contributed substantially, you know, we feel. So we have that contingency held. Well, that's for the next financial year, June, July. Think so yeah, that means you only have twenty k left out of if we use a contingency. If we use a contingency, yeah. Okay, it makes me a little bit nervous. Get fifty five. Mm. Yeah, if we get fifty five. Yeah, if we say that makes me nervous because that's okay. That's the, for the board. <laughs> um, I'm just because oh. Councillor Walker oh. had a hand up mm. earlier. So Councillor Walker, then mm. Councillor Dowler, and then Board Member Armstrong. Mm. Yeah. Um, Tony, just this model that you have in front of us which has been done by the men's shed. I don't know if you've met a gentleman, but he comes to quite a few um, council meetings. Um, lives around Appleby Way. Pretty sure his name is David Kemp. And he's quite a guru on social seating and he plays, um, plays quite a pivotal part on the Positive Aging Forum. Um, so when I attend those hui, he always is there with his seating brochure and chirps at me all the time about the appropriateness of where we place seats and how accessible they are. Is there any way that you could either send that direct to him or via me or something so that we get his thoughts around? Because he's invested many, many hours on uh, uh, working through what he believes is appropriate for all people of all um, abilities. So I, I mean, I look at that and go, I don't know how easy it is to get a wheelchair in so that they're actually sitting square on, but my, what would I know from my viewpoint here? But David would know by glancing at it. So I guess it's just here and here. Yeah, yeah. The access points, but um, yeah, it's a mock-up and it's a model, but happy to have a chat with David. Cool. Yeah. Have you got his... You know, yeah, I'll... I'll look at his numbers. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I'm just confirming the date you said about the LTP dropping. Mm. Yeah, it was between the 8th and the 4th. Those are the two dates that... Um, I've just accepted a, uh, a, an invitation to the Modern Waker drop-in clinic for the draft LTP yeah. on Wednesday the 3rd of April, 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Okay, it's the 3rd of this. Yeah. <laughs> the 4th and the 8th were the two so. dates, but... Through the chair, that's when we, then it's when the parks team's going to be going as well. Okay, great. Oh, that's a council one. Oh, so is that the same thing? It's not our is it our one? Because uh, it's the LTP. Yeah. It's a council. Has the community board got a separate one from that? Is the question. I thought yeah. we were doing it all together. Is is your invitation at Memorial Hall? Yeah. Oh, it must be the same one. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Just clarify that because I read that last night about 10 o'clock and accepted it. Okay, I'll check with um, Pip on that. Uh, were there any other yes, board member Armstrong? Um, I guess this is supplementary to um, Councillor Barry's and I'm uncomfortable about having a contingency for um, your work to be carried over into the next year because um, that, well, for a start, that would you wouldn't be able to actually start doing it for another year, I guess, because yeah. that will already, either that or it will push out some of the projects that we've, other people have just voted on without voting on this one. It just seems messy to me. You know. uh, voting on the dicks? Yeah, well, we're asking people to vote for five projects at the moment, and that one, that 35,000 is not included. So if 
for obvious reason, then if, if they vote for all those and then we say, oh, look, we'll, we'll grab that contingency out of that, then suddenly it knocks our three projects out. Rather than utilising the surplus we have now. I suspect we need, we need to know if that contingency was needed before we right. make the decision about what projects go ahead next yeah. year. Okay. Otherwise, it would affect that decision making. Yeah. Year, I could try to do that um, and ask, I'll ask Joe, once we're intending on, um, you know, completing, uh, at least starting the procurement process until we finish that, it'll be before the end of the financial year, yeah. but until then, we don't actually know um, whether we will need that 35. So, but it will certainly be before the end of the financial year, but you still need a little bit of time to be yeah. able to. Um, well, perhaps to go and do some investigating at your end, Deputy Chair, and I can have a look at what's currently there and can help you can yeah. alleviate any potential issues with forecasting into next year's and um, maybe using the super sweep and how is that contingency until we know. Um, I think that's all for you, Mr. Strange. Thank you so much for coming along. Um, Now, I know we've jumped around a little bit, but were there any other items from the board? Um, I know Mr. Armstrong, board member Armstrong, had put forward one, it hasn't come up in here, but are you satisfied at the stage of the correspondence that's going on around this was about uh, allowing community board members to attend workshops, council workshops? Is that yeah. something you want to pick up later or discuss now? Um. Oh, I haven't, haven't thought enough about the last day to, to organise my thinking around that. I see that the mayor is going to prepare either a policy or a position or a statement or something like that um, about, about that. Yes. And um, I would hope that that would then be something we could, we could react back to rather than saying, here's it, you can't go to any of those ones, but you can go to those ones. Because I, I, you're talking about going to ones which are directly related to the, this board. Um, I happened to attend one last year, which I found very useful because um, I'd been there for an earlier meeting, a uh, council meeting, and then the, the Murray Lords discussion came up. I said, can I, you know, I mean, just know about that. It took three minutes of to and fro between CEO and mayor as to whether they let me sit there, but I learned so much just by sitting there. I didn't say anything, didn't leak anything afterwards, um, but I learned so much out of it. You went the leak. <laughs> um, and uh, attending workshops, not necessarily about our ward, but about the operation of the of council uh, decision making can be really useful to enlarge our own understanding of what's going on. Um, without having to push into things where there, there is confidential stuff that really we shouldn't be there. We'll see what comes back from yeah. the media. Okay. Hey, uh, public forum. Discussions from today's public forum. Okay, so... Um, now, Mr. Hellier, um, you may have received the email. He was unsatisfied with the, the apology he received back from the CE. Um, and in his talk today and in that email, requested an investigation. Um, I don't think from our position there's anything we can actually do as in can't request council to do an independent investigation. The advice from LGNZ was that has to go through the CE. So the only thing that I understand we're able to do is send that back to the chief executive and um, his tell his concerns and request that she look at that. Yes, council. Yeah, through you, Chair. Um, so when Mr. Hellier came quite a few meetings ago and he raised, you know, um, the request of having a, an apology done and an acknowledgement. Part of that conversation was about whether we could get 
Mr. Hillier's name and Mrs. Stevens' name removed of files. And my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, Steve Manners, is that you were present for these conversations and you and I said that we would go about looking at getting that done. And I know that was paused because Board Member Hughes decided that at that time it was a bit contentious and um, we were protecting the names of the said landowners and we understood that. And at the next meeting, Mr Manners wasn't here and we had Mr Kirby back and Mr Kirby squashed that conversation. And I'd like to know why when Mr Manners was here that we could look at that and how come we can't look at that and we have got some form of an apology, whether it's been accepted or not. The other part of it was to get their names removed. And I don't understand how we got to the place of where we are. And I don't know, Steve, if you can speak to that or if you want to take that offline. But... No, I can, I can speak to it a, a little bit. I think I might have to, to take some of it offline if I want to go into more detail. My recollection was that I said that I didn't know the extent to which Mr. Hillier and other names had been used in correspondence and what our responsibility was under the Public Records Act to be able to remove or expunge things from the record and that I had to go away and find out whether or not that was possible and subsequently discussions went on without me. So, um, the, what, but I, what I do remember saying was that the volume of correspondence and documentation that we would have to go through to find those names mentioned and the, the statements that were... Um, considered to be objectionable would be quite a piece of work. So, um, and I think that's where I left my contribution at the meeting. Um, I'd have to go back and look at the video to see exactly what I said. But um, but that was the gist of what I said, that A, I'm not sure that we can, in all circumstances, remove things from the public record, and B, that doing so would not be a trivial exercise to go ahead and do, to find those, even if we could. But... Um, I, I too would have to check with Richard and see where where he subsequently took that over. Okay, because so I guess my concern is I hear that there's a whole lot of work involved to try and do that. I also see and hear the reputational damage that's been done to said gentlemen with their names attached to said documents that we've done a an attempt of doing an apology, but that's only a little part of the big picture. And so. As a councillor, I'd like to see that we acknowledge that reputational amount. Next to the fact that, yes, TDC will have to do some work to uh, try and fix it. So if you could continue that dialogue and it's not shut here, I'd be very grateful. Thank you. Um, I suggest is there the option of actually uh, publishing a public statement of apology in relation to since the apology was made, as acknowledged that those things were said and they were incorrect, is can the council make a public statement of apology? It's not something that I can comment on here in the room no. because I just don't have the facts and, and I wasn't privy to the request for apology, the content of the apology or even the content of, of the messages that went beforehand. So I, I actually can't comment. That's why I said I'm happy to take it um, offline. But I, yeah, I have to really take anything really... further offline. Yeah. Um, yeah. Councillor Maru. Thank you, Andrew. So, where that conversation also stopped is I asked the board before they said they're going to discuss it anymore whether the board formally acknowledged that there was a um, an apology and that those words shouldn't have been used and should have been retracted in the board's view. So, there's, there's nothing to stop the board from having a view. Yeah. And that's a public document. Right. Um, but at that stage, there was group silence, remember? And we moved on. So that's a consideration. Like uh, um, it's been raised in public forum. There has been an apology. Um, it's within the board's mandate to accept that there was an apology made and acknowledge that an apology has been made to Mr. Harry and Mr. Stevens um, for some statements that shouldn't have been made. I think that's so it's already it, public record. It's been through public forum. But have it formally documented in the minute. I just think we could acknowledge it through correspondence or the chair's report through that item um, that from a board perspective, the board so decides to say that, can acknowledge that um, there has been an apology and it is noted that there were some words said. Um, yeah, I, I just, okay. it's just not, I don't think it's going to potentially close it for Mr. Hallie and Mr. Stevens, but it's one step. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, um, 
something that I have to put in the next report. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, but I like I do like that idea because at least it's it's something. To, to be fair, it's just become public record. Yes, but it's uh it's not documented. Do you know what I mean? Someone will have to watch the video. It's... Or read the minutes. It's the end. Well, it's not documented in the minutes. The discussion could. Uh, no. That's what I mean. Like we either can put it in, ask for it to be noted in the minutes now. It's not a decision. It's just a note. Or I put it in Chair's report for next. That's uh, the clarity around. Well, it's a question for board members how you want to acknowledge that conversation. The minutes is one option. Your board report is another. One will happen at the conclusion of this meeting. One will happen in a month's time when you have another board meeting. That's it's not that's not a question for standing orders or procedure. That's about how you want to acknowledge it as a board. So I'll open that up for discussion. Okay, so um, I think everything's been a little bit moved on to hey, there's been an apology, and then that's it. Uh, I've seen the apology, and it seems to be some discrepancy over what the apology is actually for. And I think there's been some misunderstandings over the the, the whole issue, um, and we we can't move away from apology and accountability they, 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 they work together um, I fortunately have seen apologies actually used as a weapon um, the apology doesn't go as far as both Mr Hillier and Mr Stevens have uh, have indicated they're not happy with um, I can I can see where they're coming from. There, there's a far bigger issue than someone saying, "Oh, sorry about some comments." That that doesn't address the issue. It simply doesn't address the issue. Um, it's about whether or not those statements were correct or not, and it's a far bigger issue than just Mr. Hellier and Mr. Stevens. Um, they are just the ones that have come forward. Uh, so I can understand TDC's apology but from being on this side and being a community board member. I feel it doesn't go anywhere near enough. There, 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 there has to be an investigation into the, uh, uh, into the actions that have brought about the complaint, not just, oh, we're sorry about that. It's a far bigger issue, and it's beyond us as a community board. I, I would like us to recommend to the CEO that uh, we do ask for an investigation into the actions in general over what they're talking about. It's the only way to achieve uh, a, uh, a result, a, a, what's it, a, a resolution. Um, there's just too many unanswered questions floating around out there. And of course, Mr. Hellier and Mr. Stevens have borne the brunt of it, um, especially from the Minister of the Environment refusing to uh, engage anymore over information provided by uh, someone. You see, you see, that's where it's all coming from. There's been incorrect information. So this is why the, the request for investigation, I guess um, when I started, um, and I did look into what what the board can do, and there was very little in the sense of um, making things happen other than, like you've just stated, sending it back to the CE um, if the board agree to recommend that they, the TDC look into it further, and as per the request of the of Mr. Hellier. Okay. All right. Well. Does that have to go to a vote? Well, I think we could just make that an action if, yeah. if the border. Yeah. Okay. Are there any, are there any other comments on, on this before we try and find some word in? Or are the board happy for the board to put forward an action to the CE to please relook at the matter and uh, bring it to a resolution? Recommend, yeah. 
recommend uh, yes council will go. <laughs> I, I think that the CE probably thinks she has a resolution because she's done the, the the apology letter and I'm asking for a different level from an apology letter I'm asking for those names to be removed from our yeah. data and We've had this conversation, so I'm not going to repeat it about. So we've got two things. We've got that, which is her historic stuff that's brought up in a board meeting that we revisiting now, and then we've got the request um, from Mr. Hellier that the that there is an investigation on the whole entire thing and how their names got banded around like that, um, and then acknowledging that there was wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. Um, because it wasn't I haven't seen the apology, so I don't know, but in the in their eyes that it wasn't a satisfactory apology. So I guess I'm trying to say where are we going as a board from here? Are we happy to go back to the CE to request that she relook at that uh, at those three points? So one, if the ability to remove their names from the files with those incorrect statements or make a public apology. And these are obviously just suggestions. So we can't tell CE what to do. Um, and that further investigation on the matter. Yes, if that is the case, if there is, um, you know, the names removed and an apology, I would like, I guess, assurance that, that that is the end of it, or do we, or, or is then that not good enough? I'm sorry, I'm just putting it out there. Just trying to get some closure. I'm trying, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, for everybody, we yeah. all want closure. Mm -hmm. So if there's a public apology and if their names are removed, is that the closure, or, 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 or do we need a third thing or a fourth thing? Would, so we can do it all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're not sitting here in six months' time, still wanting a resolution. Is is where I'm coming from. I'm trying to put it in a. Remember, Hughes. Uh, this all could have been stopped a couple of years back yeah, by one elected person doing something. But so it's sure unfortunately that. we're looking forward to that. We're not looking back. Yeah. So from where we are now and everything we know from here, what is the board comfortable doing? All yes. we have to do is ask the CE just to read that's all, we, that's all we can do. We, we, we don't have any all right. relations. Okay. Them, but we need to, we do need to speak out on this because it is. Yes, sorry. I'm, very happy to request that the names are removed yeah. um, totally. And I'm in favour of a public apology. Yeah. Where I was coming from is, is that the closure? Or, or yeah. is this, if there's something else, apart from those two things, then let's talk about it now so we don't have to go over it again in six months' time. That's that's all I'm saying. Yeah. And I'm sure Ray Helley has got better things to do, to be honest. Mm. He wants closure, don't you? No. I'm not allowed to speak. No. <laughs> no, no. So gone. that's that's where I'm coming from. You know, let's let's make the if we're going to approach this, the, the CEO, then it's for the public apology and to get the names removed, and then we can. Yep. Yes. There is an elephant in the room here, and I'm I'm going to say it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hey, look here. Yeah. It, it, it's going on all around us, David. It's going on all around us. The subject matter changes, but the same names come up. So where... Um, no, I'm gonna, Is this going to go I'm, down I'm, no, the avenue of um, the set? I, am so, to I am so concerned with what I say yeah. being taken the wrong way. You've right. seen the trouble I'm in but I need to be a, a voice. Clearly, incorrect information has been given out to not only elected members, private people, and it would appear, if 
the documentation has been to be believed, that's not me saying this, if the document, documentation is to be believed, it looks like incorrect information has been given to government departments. So it's all very well saying, oh yeah, get an apology there. We have to ensure that incorrect information doesn't keep getting handed out. And we as a board have been a victim of that ourselves. Incorrect information is not a once off here. I know we don't wanna talk about it, but it's happening. It has happened and it continues to happen. And once again, on the, yeah. So that is an issue which needs to be addressed. And the likes of Mr. Hellier and Mr. Stevens, that issue hopefully brings the whole lot up where we can go, right, we need to change this. We need to change the culture. We need to change what is going on that we are giving out incorrect information on a regular basis. So that's the difficult thing to do. Yeah, that's... I'm sure for Ms. The, 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 the people that have come forward, once they get a, a proper apology, but the thing is you can't apologize because that's accepting responsibility. And as I said, accountability and apologies work work together, don't they? It doesn't just make it all go away. I mean, I, I, uh, all right. there was accountability for me, which cost the council $40,000. So it was, it, 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 apologies mean nothing. So have we, just so we can move on to the next person, have we got, um, we've got any suggestions from the board around the wording to go back to the CE if the board's comfortable with? I'm requesting that the names are removed, which is what we spoke about a few months ago. Yeah. And a public apology in Newsline or whatever, wherever the... And potentially looking further into what Mr Hughes was, what Mr Hughes was trying to say around the investigative stuff, which I'm not quite sure how we went there. That's almost a separate issue in my it, it, opinion. It, it is. I think, I think for... Uh, sorry. Yeah. So, so I just have one question, so... Um, the public apology in Newsline, um, that's a random that's a random strand from because I think I don't think the pub I don't I don't know, but I don't think the apology was confidential. I think the I I'm not sure if it was marked confidential or not. But, but the other the other parts in terms of the name and for their record somewhere, that's why I suggested we could document this yeah. this discussion in here, because that's what the community board can control. So Yes, you can then ask for an investigation and use sign if you want, but that's that's a, an incredible journey from an apology to mm -hmm. a new sign because to board member Hughes's, but that's not the bit he's absolutely he's necessary interested in. So, you know, I guess the bit is what can the board do? What do you want to say or do? Um, that's I guess it's probably for the board because that's probably where need to part a little bit <laughs> um, because although you're, you're sitting at the CEO, aren't you? you're not sitting at the council. No, no, it's um, so the advice from LGNZ was to send it back to the CE on behalf of the board with um, whatever recommendation from the board. So whether that is um, please investigate this further Please provide uh, a public apology or a, a satisfactory apology, and and please expunge the names from the record, either or, because as we know, the records might be too hard to go through. Well, all fairness to the chair, I think um, I think I've read that email. I think the email would be quite easy to find the date in terms of the, what that email was. In terms of where the names are and the stuff. Oh, okay, right. There. So just a quick search on an email. So it was in an email. I think if that's if that's, okay. if that's what I recall, that's where it was. All right. Um, like, see. Absolutely, we can look through emails. I thought there was an inference that there were multiple documents. Yeah, that's what but, I was but, in. But that aside, I think what you can do in the interest of moving on, it is as the board has discussed, it's an action that the board can 
request of the CE. Yeah. And I think you've got the opportunity perhaps to work out how you word that offline and you, and people can speak without fear or favour uh, outside of the board meeting to determine exactly how you word that request okay. of the CE. But yeah, the advice from local government um, you know, is, is right. That's the option that you've got to go back to the CE and request this, that and the other thing. Um, and I think that's quite a separate request from the one that board member Hughes is looking to do in terms of, of a, a more broad investigation into what's going on and, and that's something that would happen separately but in terms of what we're discussing here in public forum then um, my suggestion would be that you have a bit of a chat offline about how you word that request to the CE and it comes from you as chair of the board. Yeah okay that's cool. Is everyone happy with that? So that yeah okay. Um, Mr Fori's concern uh, I guess it was good for me to hear how close to the body lived because it was going to be mainly caution. Any other discussion points around? There was no request. No? Um, Mr. Sorry? Yes? Yep. Excellent. Good to have, yeah. good to have the other side. Speech. Um, Mr. Williamson, so requesting, this is what you've got notice to, you're requesting cash donation to Paul from discretionary funds, but well, that's only $700. Special projects. So, so, yeah, so I'm assuming special projects. Yeah. Um, and I think we did discuss this at some time back when we talked about surplus, did we? Or was that um, RFC? Oh. Do you remember Councillor Maru? I do, Madam Chair. So the board decided that because we had uh, allocated the bulk of the RFCs to the pool project, that they um, at that stage wanted to retain the special projects for things that would fall off the RFCs that would have been otherwise funded. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I guess actually, Dave, you've reminded me of that conversation. The ones that you currently have on your lift, I don't think ones that have fallen off the RFC list. So you might want to have a look at those in terms of public consultation because that may not have dropped yet in terms of who's not getting funded next year from RFCs because that's going to be put towards, it's put towards land purchase for people, wasn't it? Mm. So uh, you might pay to find out what projects did drop off. So there might be some local tweaker projects that were there that won't be funded next Good because point. of that RFC reduction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, through the yeah. chair at the meeting we had last week with Lynn and Tony and Dave, the special, the special projects were, um, there wasn't any RMC money for that. I'm not sure we've asked through the chair if there's any projects that we're expecting RFCs that won't be getting it now because of the yeah. money that we, so, so generally RFCs spread mm. really wide. Yeah. We condensed it up and gave. Um, well, I think the only one projects. for that was the Thorpe's Bunch, which is now. I think there might have been a local organisation that does plantings around the district in additional places, there's two that may have also had a reduction. Okay. Around, just from memory. Is that... They had a reduction, sorry, just to. Have the time to say our meeting's running out of time. Um, through the <laughs> chair, the, the people that do the planting, their RFC was reduced to five, not 10. Because their actuals that they used the previous year was only three. Okay. We're already all, all over there. Okay. Um, how's that? Uh, oh, and then there was obviously the housing issue. Mr. Williams raised again um, that if there are council housing that they kept occupied. So I don't know if there's. They're a department. That's really, yeah. That get like Park a bit of an update. Got the housing yeah. industry. Yeah. I believe we've got one. So we've only got one empty at the moment? Yeah. Oh, yeah. only empty because it's being renovated. How many of those are in the tweaker? But there was a waiting list as well across the community housing banks. Okay. Um, yes. Housing, if I could... Since Mr. Williamson has sat here, it's I'm really excited, Mr. Williamson, because we uh, got one step further with altering a thing called the eight-week rule, which means that people that choose one reason or another to live in a caravan or a vehicle or a, or a 
tiny home, for instance, um, it's hopefully going to change the two years, which will certainly take the edge off for emergency housing even. So let's all cross fingers that everyone sees sense. Thank you. Um, community infrastructure. Okay. Um, and then stall on the housing, we're in new housing areas, 600, 800 meters squared um, for and particularly young families. Um, the In the Chair's report, I mentioned the meeting with um, Deputy Chair and I had with um, Maureen Hugh, Pugh, um, and she has been having conversations with um, Housing New Zealand and others and developers about um, we're collaborating more so that potentially parts of um, development land will be able to be used by Kai and Maura for social housing. So there's another option to try and get more people in, whether or not that's, that floats or not. I know they they have done that in Nelson in the past. Um, but the rest will have to get back to you on that one. Like if there's anything in the in the plans at TDC around um, housing, because I know there's contention around that with land use. So I'll put a wee action there that will go back to council and just see if there's any movement with um, yeah. housing development. Chances are you can push back towards things like the future development strategy and those sorts of things, which should be available on the website. Mm -hmm. um, where they've been consulted on or published or, or what have you, but there might also be some discussions which are going on in terms of how we bring life to those things as well. So, but, yeah. but some of those, uh, some of that information will be on, on things like the future development strategy. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh. Yes. Sorry. No problem. Uh, just to let you know that I understand what two are going to do a moder uh, variation. Plan change from one week west in the near future, oh, yeah. which involves the 430 sections, I think it is, going to be developed in one week west, which we have put the sewer and water, and now we're doing the stormwater for. So I understand that is coming through for the end of the year, the council to consider, and if approved, there'll be a 300 square meter section, your 450, your 600, and maybe some bigger ones as well amongst them. But it's a variation to the plan changes they did back in 2009 and 10, I think, for the whole Waterway West area. Mm -hmm. And they're just making it more compact, allowing smaller sections than just having one size fits all. So it'll be interesting to see where we get to with that later in the year. How many did you say? How many? Well, it's 430 there? sections, I think, from memory. Mm -hmm. yeah, but there's no um, guidance yet of how many will be small, medium, or large. Mm -hmm. Or whether they'll be free at home. Oh, right. Okay. Interesting. Do we know who the developer is? Wakatoo. 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 Spending three and a half million bucks on the stormwater. Middle Well, that's really So, sorry, through yeah. the chair, come, is there, you may have already discussed it in the council, but following on from our meeting with Maureen Pio, is it possible that? We could have a look at approaching what could show about whether they've considered any collaboration with social housing. The I think there's a deal with buying your amongst that as well, floating. Yeah. Which it's is also, yeah. yeah. So it is in consideration. Yeah. It's all being done as one long thing. So it's but yeah. still actually yeah. it's the table. We we know nothing. The devil's the detail until right. we say it. But it's good that those conversations are good. being had. There was a, a factor of social housing being discussed as we speak. Good to hear. Mm. Okay, um, moving on to um, Christine Shackner's presentation around the Code of Conduct agenda. So, as we know, we have tabled facts um, to a later date uh, for. Oh. You didn't didn't vote on it while I was standing out <laughs> Well, we voted to hold it off. Um, <laughs> so, is there anything else that anyone needs to add to that? I mean, it was. Um, this is our code of conduct, which uh, I, I have to have to thank the shakers for basically on our behalf. 
spending an absolutely huge amount of time uh, and effort into producing a real quality document here. Um, clearly, the Housing District Council has a different view, but it is a view. So, uh, I understand that a letter was written to the CEO and the CEO has replied that they're refusing to investigate the issues. Um, I think we need to, as a board, we need to do something here because the, the code of conduct affects us all. I know it's affected me uh, a huge amount and, um, and I wouldn't want anyone else to go through what I've been going through over the last year. Yeah. Um, and we need to have clear definitions in place. Um, I think we need to look into further. I, 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 as I understand, if someone lays a complaint, you have to at least investigate it and come to a conclusion, not just refuse to investigate. So um, we need to certainly at least seek some clarification uh, from Tasman District Council. And as I said, unfortunately, the information we're being given is being hidden from us. So uh, I'm unable to send emails again. Not Nothing bad. I just can't get into my computer again. Um, but we need to ask for the redacted emails. I did try. Um, that is the most important thing at the moment for, for the board. Um, because as I said, it brings into, you know, if we've all read the releases, um, I'm pretty happy with what we've what we what we know. But as I said, clearly the community board have this view, and Tasman District Council have this view, and we need to come to a point where we all agree. Oh, oh, sorry. I don't know what you're talking about? Uh, a protective the, the, email about what? Oh, sorry. sorry. We need to get all the information so the community board can make a decision along with the Tasman District Council. We need to we need to come to the same conclusion. So was, um, correspondence between LGNZ. No, I just want to know what you want. Action. This is a, oh. The no. correspondence between LGNZ and Council regarding the Multwicker Community Board Code of Conduct. Yeah. Uh, we would that, like. That's, for me, that's the most important thing we, we need right at the moment. And then we'll be in a slightly better position to understand our position. Because we've been told one thing by LGNZ and then suddenly it changed a bit. Right, was this this year? Yeah. So 2024? Uh, well, no, it was last year. Uh, in, in October, November, I think it was. We'll just hit. Have... Yeah, there's, there's only a short... What period. are the correspondence during 2023 around that subject matter? Okay, so that's that's done. That's an action. Okay, and of course, we do need to discuss all the issues that have been raised by the emails and the shapers, but it's too big to discuss. This is... Yeah, no, I was going to say we need that off. We'll have to just have a meeting offline. It's just too big again. But we'll be in a better position once we've got the emails. Clarity. Yeah. Okay. So, um, because we do that every month. Yeah. <laughs> we sort of need to, like, we, need to, we, wanna... we need to have it done by next month, you know? So it's up to. We do have a board member away. I'm zooming in. And a 12. Well, yeah, that's I right. think count as a yeah. part of your yeah. Yeah, Lisa's um clarified that. Excellent. Thank yeah. you. Oh, that's why you got your four AM start, because that's that'll cost us. Well done. Well done. Yeah, sorry. You're right. <laughs> okay. Try being malright. So we can um we can add that in as the board as the um, board members item. Yeah. The next meeting, because hopefully by then we have that information back from council. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, those for all the public forums. 
Mm -hmm. Action list. Uh, correspondence, take this read. Actions. So, moving backwards. Rubbish bins. So, oh, oh yes. Well, should we do this one first? Because oh, this is, I'm going this way. Oh, sorry. For some reason, my legs get the front. So, I've got rubbish bins from Tweaker being painted, but Deputy Chair has an update. Do you? I have an update. Good, so, so this to be noted. Um, all right, I'm going to let and the chairs report the actions. Uh, has been trying to get a quote from image creators. Um, that you mentioned in the meeting last week. So I went to image creators and I used to work there, so it was easy to ask. And spoke to Andy and he said, I'll do it right now. So he literally, I was standing there and they sent the quote. And we're one step ahead, further. So well, they've got so the quote. quote. So all Lynn was waiting for was for the quote mm -hmm. before she could do anything else. So that's mm -hmm. um, right. So, so the update. I'll table it at Youth Council on Monday night. Okay, great. So the update is Deputy Chair has spoken with MD at Image Creators. Image Creators. A quote has been created and sent back through to Lynn Hall. Yep. And Councillor Walker has tabled it for the um, Youth Council. So Lynn sent me an email which has got the pictures, if you can call them pictures, yeah. coloured strip. I cannot believe we've waited all this time for it yeah. anyway. And a price. So it's going to Youth Council for them to have, mate, because it was their project. Yeah. So, yeah. Price? Ridiculous. I don't know. Got my right. memory. Sorry, I left my computer down. That's all right. 295. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next. It's nothing like what the Youth Council had asked for months and months. Oh, years ago. But anyway, that's right. I will table it on Monday and we'll come back. Wow. This is the thing. This is why um, we're going to try and get these actions done because it's not fair. I mean, you're you're probably on a third youth council now that have from the beginning of that. Yeah. Every year's a new youth council. Yeah. Five years in. So that's going to be our aim to mm. get these done. So thank you, Deputy Chair, for chasing that up. Number two, another one that Deputy Chair chased up for us. Thank you very much. Around the um the library to display. Yeah. So uh, take away. So I was just, I was sick of seeing it on the action list, actually. <laughs> um, I, um, I spoke to uh, Janine at the library, and obviously they're, they're just so stuck for space. And um, but, uh, there was an area on top of their history cabinet um, in the main library area here mm -hmm. that there's room for them to go with, measured it, and they, so, yeah, they're over there. So, um, so we put them we put them here just so that you could all see that the action was actioned, and then tomorrow morning they're going to be have a new home on top of the history cabinet in the main problem for all of Monawaka to enjoy, rather than it being sitting in a cupboard at the old TDC room. So when Kiyosato come in September, they'll be delighted they'll be to see. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So uh, they're moving tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Yeah. Right. So we can close it off. Yes. Perfect. Action closed. Yay, yay, yay. Um, this heavy truck thing. I don't know if that just a conversation. That's uh, uh, Drew has, he's copied me in some emails, so it's a work in progress. He's, um, so he's looking at here. What's um, your thoughts? Yes. Okay. So that remains. So um, what, his, what his idea is, is maybe... And this is not nothing said. It's just him brainstorming. Is maybe putting the the island, the little middle island thing back. Would you call them? Visionary. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is, say this is just an idea that he's um, toying with. Putting the pedestrian refuge back in, so that the trucks um, continue to use, go back to using King Edward Street and not. Um, Oh, so just in the chair, um, the board needs to be really careful 
especially for board members that's in Park Street, that you're moving a problem from your street to another street. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just caution on in terms of... Well, I'm not moving it from... It, it was always been King Edward Street. Sorry, through the chair. Yeah. King Edward Street is an industrial area. Park Street is residential. But are you sure it won't move it to Parker Street? So, and also, oh. let's not forget that there was a complaint by all accounts from Parkland School about the heavy... And the trucks, which is why they've just done all that work there, and which has cost the rate payer a lot of money, and the trucks are continuing to use it. So it actually hasn't solved the problem. I've got it. I've just uh, say so if, 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 if I lived in the street and that was my action, I would be being very careful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's not a conflict. Yeah. So you will really like it or not, you have power around the table that people that live in other streets don't. There was going to be a vote on it. Obviously, there's a conflict because I live on that street. Yeah. Is that what you mean? No, what I'm saying is by sitting around the Your table, you have you have a little bit of more influence than a normal person. And yeah. currently that's attached to your name and you live in that street. So does that count then, sorry, through the yeah. chair, that I was advocating for the community that we got the um the signatures for for the petition. So I'm really speaking on their behalf. I mean, we can get the other people in here that signed the petition. Or, or, did you, or did you, was that a petition that you got and were you part of the petition? So similar to Transport Choices, at what stage do you stop Thank being you. a governor and making decisions brought in front of you and bringing stuff in as the caution? Because at the end of the day, the conflict's yours to decide. But uh, it would make me nervous if I was in that now. situation. Thanks, Lee. Um, up to you if you want to shift it to another. That's the next one to leave. Mel. Yeah. Don't think any of the board members are interested. Um, Councillor Viola. Roads man, not you. I suggest you wait till you see the speed limit review come through before you get too radical and race off. Not liking that. Um, board member Armstrong. I would uh, be confident in a bet that there would be more people if it, a referendum or something like that went out. More people would complain about more and more trucks going down High Street, travelling slowly through there, with people sitting outside cafes trying to talk to each other than people who want to move it off Park Street. Um, Adrian, Adrian. Board Member Hughes? No, no, no. Just, since the roundabouts came in, our street is hugely busy. I don't know what it opened. You're in lies. You're in lies. It's just about a, a little country rain, which actually basically is down there. It's a dead end. I don't know where all the trucks are coming from. So I, I think it's everywhere. I think I take, I take, is um, apart from High Street. Okay. I take Councillor Murray's point and I'll leave that for. Deputy Chair, um, if she wants to move that action to someone else. Um, standing I'm orders. to take it off. I'm sick of talking about it. Okay, so, well, yeah, get rid of it. I can always, yeah. Oh, Simnus, do you normally roll over that easy? Oh, okay. <laughs> be fair, probably about It makes it easier for you. Yeah, if, I'm, if it comes back, we can. A bit like the Kia Sutter gift, so I'm, I'm, I'm sick <laughs> of talking on. about it. Um, da -da -da -da. Standing orders count. This is you. I think this is the role of the chair, Madam Chair. So that was my role when I was the chair. So um, the key part of standing orders, um, the board will remember council changed their standing orders. And one of the key parts was the challenge you had today about five minutes slots. Five minutes for, we need to review our standing orders. Yep. Yeah, so, and if you look at, if you like council's standing orders, you could have a look at those amendments that were made, but they basically... Um, Okay, so we'll, be... we'll shift um, the standing orders and council's complaints process to the chair instead of Councillor Maru. Um, Aerodrome, we've already discussed that, so do you want to keep that on there or can we close that now? It's, this was you. We'll close that because you, um... you had the conversation. At some stage, I'd like to bring to the board the cost that we've had through the airport. Yeah. The investigations that are going on. We were in the green last year at the airport. We are now in the red. 
it's not ten thousand dollars. You keep going from there, but I'll get some numbers. Okay. But, no, I don't think it's acceptable. Right, but yeah. do you do you want to keep it under this? Don't worry, me. Whatever you want, take it off there if you like. So you're probably going to have to give a bit more context. So you've got yeah. two staff members sitting here, and I don't know. I can't speak for you, but oh, I would question if they know what you've been talking about. To be fair, Councillor Dowler. I'm just saying, should we create a new action? So we'll close off this last one. The thing is that we're being recorded, so it means that we don't have the context and nobody out there listening will have so, the context. So we're, sorry. we're receiving lots and lots of complaints regarding noise in here. Right? Yes. Um, some of them come from some the same person quite regularly, or some of the people quite regularly. Mm -hmm. And of course, it takes staff time and it all gets recorded, et cetera, et cetera. And the bill was racking up quite, quite quickly. Mm -hmm. on responses mm -hmm. and sometimes the responses are given and we get three more questions on that yeah. same thing so yeah it, it, it's concerning to me as as chair of the Motueka Airport Advisory Group how we had a, a reasonably good surplus and it's gone just for that particular reason right. and it just doesn't seem to be stopping so I just, just have to voice my opinion that I I basically think it's becoming unfair to be honest. Okay. All right. And so we'll just we'll just update that action to say that um Councillor Dowler will come back to the board with the costs to the um well, airport. The, airport. The, the airport, airport. airport yeah. um regarding the investigations that they've had to undertake due to complaints. Yep. Okay. Uh the workshop with board member Hughes. We've we have you have had the meeting with board. Are you happy for the close that? Well, oh yes, we have. Yes, definitely. Should we close that one? Or yeah, yep. Okay, so that's closed. Um, public forum. So we've already just discussed that, and we have an action coming out around Mr. Hellier public forum so that action can be placed as a line item on this one as an updated line item on this one um, the other one the reimbursements that's closed members appointments list that's closed sent um, the board update on that which is basically you, you are not bound to go to any of these uh, committee meetings that we are appointed to. It's more of a point of contact for these committees. Um, emergency services, so that just should read. Motueka Community Board, sorry, I'll come back to you. Motueka Community Board, uh, regular meetings with FENS and police. And it's Councillor Maru because he has the relationships to arrange those with the board meeting, with the board members, sorry. It's fence, yeah, yeah. Uh, evidence, uh, but fence. Oh, okay. Fence so is fine. Fence. Fence is just fire. We're oh, all with the emergency, I thought it was Ambo. No, okay. no, not American. So it's just <laughs> all fire and urban fire. Okay, so fence, police, and ambulance. And, and regularly, it's a great update because it was uh, basically it was quarterly three times a year. Yeah. So sorry, what was the change? That so in the subject just reader, regular. it'll say MCB, which we get community board regular. Meetings with fins, police, and ambulance. Yeah. And in the um the line item for today, it's the action is just that Councillor Maru uh, will arrange those meetings on our behalf because he has those relationships. Okay. So just change the title. Yes. Please. Yeah. Uh, that's that's all of them. Any more? No. Right. Uh, so that's the close of the chair's report. We've had a mover, we've had a seconder. Everyone okay? Anyone against? No, carried. Now the financial summary. I have a mover for that, please. Yep. Deputy Chair and second by Board mm -hmm. Member Hughes. Oh, yes. Question. And it might be for Mr. Manners today, but um so, so last month, the board asked for an explanation of what the expenses were. When I attempted to get that, I got told that 
councillors and community board members get their pay slips, the answer's there. That's sort of not the answer that I was looking for. Mm. So I was going to raise it with a C, but she was away. But in terms yeah. of, there should be transparency because our remuneration is discoverable. It's mm. published in the long-term oh, the annual plan, annual report. So to get the split of what those reimbursements were last week, because you would have seen the email, I basically gave the answer, can you just please confirm? Yeah. It was quite difficult to get. And I'm going, if the board's responsible for ratifying finance, the board should be able to gain that detail in finance. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll raise it with um, the CE, but I was, I was surprised at the pushback I got to ask a question on behalf of the board about what the expenses were. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it may have not been a clear enough answer. So I'll I'll, I'll rephrase the answer. <laughs> but um, the board should be able to scrutinise the board's expenditure because any member of the public can ask for it. Mm. We should be. We should know if we yeah. have a question. So it could have been the way I asked the question, but I will. I'm not hearing did you have a uh, question, board member Hughes? No. On track, did you have a question? Are you oh, oh, I was seconding it. This right? Yeah. This is the financial report. Was there yeah. any further discussion on that other than what um, Councillor Maru? No. Okay. So all in favour to move that. Say aye. 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 Yes. Carried. Special projects action list. Can I have a mover of to receive the report, please? The funds, sorry. Well, the thirty-five thousand you were talking about adding another line. So you From funds 20. up first instead of. Please want to come back but, to us to see whether he needs it by this financial year. Yeah, we're waiting for his our feedback, and then we'll he add it into next month's report as long as we get it back. Um, sorry, mover of yes, question. Yes, so the question is we had the presentation of special projects in chair's report yeah. where there's no decisions, mm -hmm. yet I don't see the ones we talked about here in the special projects list. So, this the, is the, the decision, yes. So, this is mm -hmm. I think that's what board member Armstrong was yeah. talking to. This is the formal part where you make those decisions because this is the report for that. Yet none of those ones in the PowerPoint are here. Mm -hmm. So they should be here, not the chair's report. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this we should quote yes in the middle of Yeah. Yeah. Which is what we just talked about before, which we're going to have to. The same 35 where the contingency may or may not come from. And... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But we're going to have to put that in next month's report, yeah. which will align with yeah. simultaneously public voting. So yeah. only semantics, just the placing. Yeah. Be. I think, um, and also to do a vote whether we do include the ones that we said we had funding for last year, but now. Ones that are to come that we haven't resolved to do yet. Yeah. Can't, shouldn't be on the report, I think. So can't be in this. So, so through the chair, what I'm saying is they need to make their way through to this report before they can be started or funded. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so that mechanism to get them in here. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's, where the, that's where the commentary yeah. comes from. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So is um, just to clarify the suggestion that we put them into this report the next meeting that to be voted on that the board accept those special projects that um, Deputy Chair presented before. Yep, so through the Chair, um, you'll, you'll get a council officer, probably Mr Menace, or we were sitting there, to write a, just a, a report for council Yeah. That, that proposes these are added to the special projects and it's an agenda item and then, then they'll transfer through to that. And this is an easier way of doing it, Mr Menace, but I think that's the only way. Yep. So, can we yep. just put that down as an action then? Thank you. Yep. And then that should help tidy up. Okay. Um, right. And page 102. I don't have a 
I don't have a header on that one, so I don't know what it is. Uh, uh, playgrounds. Playgrounds. Hold on. Hold on. I don't have 100 and 1. Hold on, guys. So oh, yeah, so no. Forget about that. That's on hold. Yeah. Um, accessible playground, we've already just talked about that. And then, so Tony's update from that can go into there. Uh, Matter how you've already touched on that. The cemetery, the cemetery, there's already up to that, so that can go into that one. And Josh Lock and Moon done. What's this last one? Wednesday, put the table saving in June. That's part of the landscape. That's the DEX one, isn't it? So they're all really covered. So all of those updates from, from Claire's report can go into that one and Tony. Yes, board member Armstrong. Yeah, um, the last one is the picnic table out here and the, and the landscaping draft plan. Last action there was uh, still consulting and proposed in store in autumn. We're in autumn now. I'm just wondering, you know, another month or so, it'll be possibly too late to start planting new stuff uh, getting towards winter. Yeah. I'd like to uh, check if that thing is if getting close to actually starting work. So that things won't die. So this is the very last one. This is the planting draft plan provided to the board to still consulting and propose install in the water. Is that one? No. You're talking about the planting. Well, yeah. Um, if, if it's going to be just for a table, then not really. Right. But originally it was for assistance with all the landscaping there. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. It sort of gradually morphed into it, looks like it's a table. Right. Okay. So we need clarification from staff. If it is including landscaping, that it will be done within the next month or two since winter's coming. Mm. And it's settled that we're going to be doing it in autumn. Yeah. I see, there's a person who's not an expert landscaper. But we need to, we need to know. So we can like so winter, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. So who's going to check that? Staff. So it's an action that goes back to staff. Yeah, but the grant ribbon. Stephen Richards is the overseer. Yeah, Richards has been involved with the project. Yeah, Steve's one. Steve Richards. Yeah, I remember now. Okay, any other discussion on them? No. We're all in grants. Anyone against? Carried. Okay. That's that's us, yeah? We'll close the meeting. I have got the cut of hair written in my box, so I'm sorry. I didn't even see who was who's next. Oh, that was done at the very start. Uh, let me see if I read that down. Who moved that? Oh, that was me that moved it. Um, and Hughes. Oh, you Okay, I'll close off, guys. Feel free to join in. You know, oh, this, yeah. you know we can. Safe space. Oh. We'll go slow. Oh, 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 yeah. Are we ready? Kua mutu. Mato. Ahi. Motine wa. Manaki tia. Mai. Mato katoa. O mato toa. O mato fano. Ayo ki te ao. Kapai. 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 Kapai.